It is a beautiful, sunny, if windy day south of Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Motor Speedway, site of today's Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 on Fox. Well, we started 2022 with a whole new race car. Four races in. Why don't we add in a whole new race track? Third time around for Atlanta Motor Speedway, now very steeply banked. In a season of surprises, that has given rise to some new faces running up front and in victory lane. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy with a, well, a couple of familiar faces. Hey, Jeff Gordon guys. back in the Fox booth, now the vice chairman of Hendrick Motorsports and my usual partner, uh, Clint Boyer, uh, both veterans of the NASCAR Cup Series. But, Jeff, this is not the Atlanta Motor Speedway that you remember. Uh, uh, for everybody, even in the field today, as long as I can remember coming here to Atlanta, it was an abrasive track. It chewed up the tires. You were slipping and sliding around these big corners. Now, brand new pavement, lots of grip, a new type of package for these cars where they're going to be running that super speedway, lower horsepower, lots of downforce. Now they're going to be three wide every single lap, maybe, maybe two wide every single lap. They're going to be bump drafting. It's going to get wild. Hold on tight. Tighten up those belts, boys. Oh, you bet. Now, this track has been reconfigured. It's now the steepest banked mile and a half speedway in America. It should race like Daytona and Talladega. The folks here hope. Clint, how much of Daytona is going to translate to today? Well, I think Marcus Smith, you know, the vision was there. He wanted to add another name, another track name to that list, that, that, that plate style racing, super speedway, and I think he has nailed it. Perfect blend. I think you've seen pack racing in practice. Xfinity race was wild, Jeff. You said it, two wide, three wide, but the collaboration of how that happened. I racing, believe it or not, came to the table, designed this racetrack, let their racers race on it, actually, all virtual, nailed this racetrack. I think we're in for a an action-packed race, and these boys, I'm telling you, every one of them are nervous about this race, and that tells me it's very good reason. Hold on tight. Well, practice yesterday caused a surge in ticket sales yesterday evening. Here is one reason why. Joey Logano, who was in the booth for yesterday's Xfinity race, we're going to visit with here on the Pace Laps. Let's dial him up. Hey, Joey Logano, it's Boyer Gordon. Mike Joy up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Loud and clear. All right, buddy, man, you were up in the booth for Xfinity race yesterday. What a wild race there is. I was curious, what did you learn there, and what can you apply to this race today? I learned some things. I'm not sure how much to apply today. Those Xfinity cars have never been more different than these next-gen cup cars. So I think we'll be learning as we go here, uh, even when it comes down to the choose rule, the restart, to what lanes are going to go. Uh, and how much draft is coming into play versus handling. I think we're going to figure it out as we go here. So we got 500 miles to do that. Hopefully the whole Shell Penzo Mustang's up front at the end. Hey, Joey, this is Jeff. You're one of the best on these types of racetracks, at least Daytona and Talladega. I know it's a little bit different here on the mile and a half, but you know, how aggressive do you think you could be? We see a lot of bump draft, and we see those Fords can really lock bumpers. How much of that do you anticipate doing here in the first half of this race? I think you may bump draft on the straightaways. I'm not sure you're going to want it in the corners that much. Uh, the cars are definitely a lot more on edge than when they are in Daytona, Talladega. So I don't think uh, outside of the first corner you're going to see much uh, push draft and unlock of bumpers. Well, man, good luck. We're going to be up here watching. We're looking forward to it. All right. Have fun. All right, here's your Folds of Honor. Quick Trip 500 starting grid set by NASCAR, the point metric and last finish. So Chase Briscoe, our last winner, is on the pole with Ryan Blaney. The first of three wins last year for Blaney came right here. We just spoke to Joey Logano, Kyle Busch. His next win will tie a record for most consecutive years with a victory. Row three, Tyler Reddick. He is a sleeper pick every week until he wins. And Chase Elliott, the only Georgia driver to ever win here was his father, Bill. Ross Chastain, third at Vegas, second at Phoenix. All that's left is the one. Kevin Harvick on a long winless streak. His first cup win came here. Maybe his next one will too. Kurt Busch, four-time winner here on the old Atlanta. And Eric Almirola, who is really good at super speedway racing. Hendrick Chevys for Alex Bowman and William Byron in row six. As he, they and the rest of the field will scroll across the bottom of your screen. So 
let's get some strategy and late breaking stories beginning with Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, this is a whole new game. I had to just toss my Atlanta setup book out the window. But one book I had to hold on to was my strategy book. The old Atlanta, it was simple. That caution fly, four Goodyear tires. But now I have to handle it like a super speedway. I want that track position, and I have to do all the moves on pit road, Regan, to keep my driver up front and out of harm's way. Well, Larry McReynolds, not only do the crew chiefs have to change their notebook, the drivers do as well. From Atlanta a year ago to this new Atlanta, completely different. The pack style racing and Denny Hamlin being one of the best at the pack style racing. He told me as he got in the race car, though, that notebook that he has, not very useful for here. That mile less racetrack means he will have to spend the entire race today relearning how the moves are made, how quick they're made, where to make them, and how to be there at the end of the race. Jamie Little, he starts 15th. Look for him to find his way up front. Well, the man starts Starting first, picking up right where he left off a week ago, Chase Briscoe. Boss man Tony Stewart here sitting on the box watching his driver, the most recent first time winner. Chase told me though, today's race will be the most mentally challenging of his career. He said he felt like he was going 400 miles an hour in practice. Everything is happening so fast and that the one key to remember today for Chase Briscoe, remember to breathe. Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. They have checked pit road speed and they form up out of turn number two. Here are the changes recently made to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Finally repaved but reconfigured. The banking was increased four degrees. The back stretch and the front stretch were both, well, the back was narrowed, the front was widened a bit. The corners were significantly narrowed with a new 18 degree apron. And Daytona Talladega style rules, the double line is out of bounds. You cannot pass below the double line or send someone below that double white line. And I it, think that's so important when we get down to the final laps of this race, you know, and I, I restart. We saw it yesterday, the Xfinity race, a block, anything like that. You can't force them below that yellow line and you can't invent your position below the, that white line. I already told him myself, yellow line is a Daytona. <laughs> it's definitely a white line. Daniel Suarez will have our Tootsie's cam and he's wearing our Fox visor cam that took uh, took a bit of engineering and work to do and we appreciate Daniel's efforts in changing his tear offs to accommodate for the late day sun to be able to do that. You saw all the mirrors inside that car for Daniel Suarez. These guys are going to be using everything at their disposal to see that view behind them as well as that spotter on the roof. Thanks to Billy Scott and the 2311 team for allowing us a rear spoiler cam on now that's a great Kurt Busch's shot. car. Ryan Blaney with a front bumper cam starting from the front row. That's the pace car just ahead. Blaney's going to be tough here today. Good on these style, style of tracks. Austin Dillon, our Coca Cola Zero Sugar cam, rolling from 17th. And we're going to close with the closer, Kevin Harvick, the Mobile One camera, starting in eighth. Two cars to the rear. Brad Keselowski unapproved adjustments after inspection and Harrison Burton the Wood Brothers uh, Ford failed inspection a couple of times and will also have to start out back. Chase Briscoe our most recent winner here is he and his crew. Yeah, for uh, everything starting that season off, obviously uh, showed what we can do and we skewed all day last week. So trying to do it again today. Uh, obviously, Joe, stay be line on you. Just be aggressive, do your normal deal, be just fine. Appreciate everything you guys do for me and the team. So make it a good one. Don't you just love it when you get that first win? All of a sudden, it comes with confidence. Oh yeah. Because that now he's turned into a leader of that team. <laughs> Well, I think and it's such an important thing. That big win gave him the number one pit stall, gave him that front row starting spot today because it rained qualifying out. Such an important thing, that momentum swing that it helps him do, and you heard that confidence in his voice, very alive. Today's race, 500 miles, 325 laps, and the stages here are nearly equal. 105 laps, 105, 115. 45 down pit road. Larry tells us the fuel window is 64 to 70 laps and we'll have a competition caution at lap 45. Nice crowd on hand as we take the green flag in Atlanta. All 
already. You saw what cars can do when they lock together. They drove off from the pack. That's something that's going to be a learning event all day long. Well, Joey Logano, when we spoke to him prior to this race, right, he said, oh, a little bit of a wiggle there for Joey Logano with Kyle Busch on the outside. And here comes Chase Elliott. But you heard him say, we'll lock bumpers maybe to turn two. And that's exactly what Logano did, trying to push his teammate, Ryan Blaney, to the lead. The first Blaney thing I, that lap, Briscoe now out in front. The first thing I notice when I look at this track, you can definitely tell when they get to the corners, it's just narrower. It's a little bit more narrow than what we have at Daytona and Talladega. And asking three wide or a four, four wide situation <laughs> out of here, look out. Briscoe leads lap two. Look at this funnel down that straightaway, and the track narrows up to turn one. Yeah, I got a chance to go around the racetrack earlier today in a pace car, and I got to tell you, turn one, is, especially the speed that these guys are running inches away from one another, when you get to turn one, it feels like it's one car with wide, but yet they're two wide, 190 miles per hour. A headwind coming down this front straightaway, and a about a 30 mile an hour tailwind down the backstretch. There's so many things going on already. I think, you know, when you start talking about a super speedway type of racing, one of the things that you notice is accordion. The thing on accordion, the guy slips up a little bit, you'll have, it'll stack that line up, and now all of a sudden the outside or inside line, whichever one was the opposite, will start prevailing. Also handling. Because of those tight radius that we showed you versus a, a Daytona, very tight radius, asking a lot out of the car, leaning on the wheel, much different here at Atlanta. You mentioned handling right there. We saw Ross Chastain on the inside of somebody going into turn one. Had a big run. He had to check up because the front end took off on him. That's what I hear a lot of guys complain about is turn three. When you get a big run, the fronts just don't want to hold that line on the bottom. And I think some of that is that old American flag, old glory, blowing hard down the back straightaway, blowing these cars off into the corner. They get in there with a big head of steam and pick up a push. You know, if there's a car on the outside of you, you're going to be in trouble. Start to see that outside line start to get a little more organized. Now, yesterday in practice, everybody tried to stay around the bottom of the racetrack. In the Xfinity race, everybody ran the top. I'm, I'm going to go wherever that guy behind me is. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it goes back to that super speedway type of racing. You know, what's behind you, that run, uh, you know, and how many cars, more importantly, are in that line is where you need to be. Well, that was a fun thing to watch right there. Joey Logano got a big push from Kevin Harvick down the back straightaway and took that momentum to see if he could clear his teammate Ryan Blaney. But as you can see, didn't work out. Here comes a pass for the lead. Kyle Busch moving to the inside of Chase Briscoe. And here comes that whole inside line with that momentum down the backstretch. Yeah, I really thought we were about to see this outside lane form and go single file. Boy, that only lasts about a half a lap. See, the, uh, Chase Elliott got to the rear bumper of the 18, gave him a big shove. Look at the draft that these cars create down this front straightaway. Well, that's something you don't see a whole lot at a place like Daytona, Talladega, where you get that kind of a run and complete the pass. Three wide all the way down to turn two. From turn three to turn two, they had Kevin Harvick stuck on the outside, and they were three wide. It's working that line. Again, working the mirror, listening to your spotters, trying to figure out where that momentum is coming from, because you saw the advantage of having a big push like that pushed Kyle Busch to the lead. Here's what we saw a lap ago. Harvick pushed up high, and here they come. Yeah, it almost looked like Joey Logano moved up the racetrack a little bit. Kevin had to maybe make an evasive move and lost momentum, and then that's when they went three wide. Dropped him all the way back to 11th. William Byron uh, running in ninth spot. He's up three positions from the start. Jamie? And Mike William told me he watched both races yesterday, Xfinity and Trucks, and he loved to see the track widen out. He said that gave us a lot of confidence because yesterday he just didn't feel secure enough to push it. Now, today, they made some changes accordingly, and he said this car is so much better. And Mike, it's interesting. They brought their super speedway cars, so from Daytona, but they have an inter intermediate style setup on it. Very different, something we haven't heard before in NASCAR. That's true. A one and a half mile super speedway. Two lanes of the draft working. With 10 laps complete, Kyle Busch 
out in front of the field here in Atlanta. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. 15 laps complete here in Georgia. They love their Braves and they love their hometown boy, Chase Elliott. Got a big roar from the crowd when he took the lead one or rather three laps ago. And <laughs> doing it on that by Yeah, that's there I hear are. you, Cowboy. Look at him. Digging it, got him on their feet. Bunch of Chase Elliott fans in the stands today. But he's got a good handle on race car. You know, rip, uh, ripping right around the bottom. He's able to do things that some of those other guys can't do already. And you can see where right now these two guys on that front row, Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, wide open. Maybe a li little bit of brake pressure there from Chase Elliott. I don't know if that's to try to keep Ryan Blaney closer to his rear bumper to keep that pusher behind him. Sometimes you use that to kind of keep the front end loaded too. Keep yeah. it down, helps the front end turn. But you're right, Clint, you know, in one and two, you can see where Chase Elliott's car really good right around the bottom of the racetrack. I heard a lot of drivers talking about that push into turn three, not able to wrap that bottom, follow that white line quite as good. Maybe the wind is, is affected, but it's also much flatter entry into this corner. You don't pick up the banking till much further around the corner. Biggest gainer, Ricky Stenhouse, plus 15 spots. Biggest loser right now, Kevin Harvick, uh, has dropped 22 positions. He is running 30th. It's super loose. You're going to have to have a big adjustment. 10 4. Kind of like they tell him the last car in line gets screwed around. Yeah, I mean, he said big adjustment, but trying to figure out which, which way, I, I think, you think he meant tight? Yeah, I didn't catch if he was tight or loose there. You know, guys, I talked to Alan Gustafson, Chase Elliott's crew chief, earlier this week, and he said there was a lot of debate about how you wanted to bring your race car here. Did you want to bring it all for handling with max downforce, or did you want to trim it out a little bit, knowing they're going to be running around here wide open? Some of those things you can adjust on, you can make better, but some you're locked into. Well, I think if you trim it out and you go down that path, you better be where Kyle Busch is in the 18 car. Keep that thing up front, make those blocks, and make sure you have the track position. Otherwise, you're going to need this thing to handle. Last year on the old surface in this 500-mile race, we had 11 lead changes. 20 laps in, we've already had five. 
Yeah, I think you can see. But, I mean, I keep thinking they're going to get single file and stretch out, and then what do you know? Somebody drops down that inside lane like Denny Hamlin just did the inside of Ross Chastain to make it too wide. Hamlin plus 11 started uh, 15th, currently fourth. Let's go up to the leader and Regan. Well, Mike, very interesting. The 18 car, Kyle Busch on the radio, out front, his race car doing well right now, just a little bit loose, but he is asking his team about his teammates' cars and what their cars are doing in the pack. You're always trying to learn. He wants to know what his teammates are doing, so if he is in that pack later on in the race, he knows what to expect. Kyle Busch was the most vocal of all the cup drivers during the pandemic when we raced without practice. Well, we had 50 minutes of practice yesterday, and obviously, Kyle Busch took full advantage of it. And I think he's in the right position right there with a light right line behind him. You can see the bottom line starting to move up. Denny Hamlin chose to get back in line, shooting down to the bottom. That's something you see, that cat and mouse game. Go up, maybe clear a pass right here, and then get back in line, much like Daytona. Boy, Denny Hamlin's got a good handling race car. You know, he, he's very good when we go to these bigger tracks where you got to work the air, work the draft. And you saw right there him him really searching and trying a lot of different things to find out where can I still get the downforce on the car by hanging down to one of the corners of the car and where I can get in line and get that toe. And let me tell you, it needs a good run. It's been beat up early this year. It's been a rocky road, some mistakes on pit road again last weekend. Needs a good solid run, if not a win here, would turn his year around. Boy, Look at turn two. Big spin it out, it out. and sliding down to the apron. Noah Gregson. Oh, sorry, guys. That's a shame. Got a lot of experience yesterday in the Xfinity race. Yeah, looks like uh, he knows it in pretty hard. Really hard. I haven't seen one of these cars actually smashed up that hard yet this year. Looked like right in the middle of the corner. He just went in like he had normally been doing, right in the middle at the Alsco sign. It got loose, and so he corrected, and when it corrected, it bit and turned straight to the right, head on to the wall. Well, we've seen a lot, you know, with that rack and pinion steering, it's really hard to catch it back to the right. Yeah. Sideways. Seemed loose back Boom. there. Yeah. Exactly like, like Ross, Ross Chastain, Chastain at, at California earlier this year. That is a hard a hard hit, as hard as you can hit. Well, one, these cars, right, lower profile tire, pretty stiff. That underwing works great in a straight line, but uses a, loses a lot of downforce when it goes into yaw. The car doesn't have a lot of side force, so really hard to catch these cars once it goes around. Well, I think it doesn't have a lot of downforce, meaning it doesn't have a lot of air pushing down on the car. Most of that air is directed underneath of it, that diffuser that we all have talked about so many times is so important to the actual downforce of the car when it does get in a yaw it takes all the air out from underneath of it not much on that spoiler under and it goes for a ride amr safety team on the scene quickly to attend to noah gregson who is making his second start in the nascar cup series here he comes out of the car and sadly an early exit this young fella's got talent boy he really a contender every time he straps into that xfinity car and just wanted to get a full race in and get some good solid cup experience here. Not to be. Tough day for Noah Gregson, but you still have a chance to win a share of $10,000 of Clint's cash by playing Fox Bet Super 6. Just scan the QR code now, download the Super 6 app, enter your picks about today's race for a free shot at the jackpot and uh, Jeff, let's try you out on well, these. Well, first of all, I didn't know Clint had this much money. Well, he won't after today. By now. He won't. <laughs> Where will the pole sitter finish? Chase Briscoe. How many lead changes in stage two? Who will have the fastest lap? Who will lead the most laps? How many caution laps? And which of six drivers will have the best finish? It's easy to play, and it's free. Those are hard questions. I was going to say, today, those are really hard questions. Yes, sir. That they are. Well, guys, this is an interesting time for this caution to come because remember, there is a competition caution at lap 45. You cannot fuel the car until that competition caution, but you got to believe drivers like Kevin Harvick, who's out there struggling with the handling, he'll definitely come. You can do anything, change tires, make adjustment. You just can't fuel the car. Pit road is still closed. 
and it looks like it will remain closed for this lap. So let's show you what we're up against here. Trying to make Atlanta Motor Speedway a super speedway like Daytona and Talladega. Atlanta fits comfortably within Daytona International Speedway. You go sailing down that backstretch at high speed, and then look what you're confronted with. In black is Atlanta. Daytona, the radius of turn three and four is almost 1,000 feet. But here, it is only three quarters as long, and that makes it a tight corner at the same speed you're running at Daytona. And that's where those handling issues come into play. You saw Nora Gregson get loose right there. You heard Kevin Harvick talking about making a big swing at that because you're just asking way much more out of the car with that tighter arc, tighter radius. When I also, Clint, wonder if that's where some of these big runs are coming down the straightaway because you're, you're really scrubbing a lot of speed, putting a lot of wheel into it in the corner, and then once you open up that wheel, you really gain that draft. But I, I go and right back to that point, I think that's why you have to have a good neutral balance on your car. You can't come off of those corners with a handful of wheel in it, but you can't be too loose like Noah was right there as well. You have to come off with that momentum, and I think that's, again, why that outside line is prevailing as well. Let's have a look at today's Ford Performance track facts before pit road opens. Ford has won five of the last six races here. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney. This track has been around since 1960. Fireball Roberts won the first cup race here over Cotton Owens. They're both in the Hall of Fame. Jack Smith finished third. They were the only cars on the lead lap. It was a 300 miler. Bobby Johns won the second race here. It was a 500 miler later that season. So NASCAR has determined instead of having a comp caution at lap 45, this will be it. This caution at lap 25 for Noah Gregson's crash in turn one. And <laughs> we've got What'd an audible. Say, Mike? <laughs> uh, this will not be the co competition caution. They've changed their mind. Yes, they did. Changed it I back. was just getting ready to say, I think that's a smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> I would have agreed with you, but uh, however, you know, NASCAR knows that teams have planned based on their race, based on not being able to take fuel till lap 45 well, I'm not and sure checking they tire ran, wear then. I'm not sure they ran far enough to even see what the tire wear is. Good point. So a few takers, Eric Almirola, Austin Sindrick, Chris Buescher, who had gained a bunch of spots, is in. Same with Josh Balicki. And here is Kevin Harvick getting that much-needed adjustment that he asked for. 27 laps complete. First caution of the day. Noah Gregson hooks and takes a hard right into the retaining wall.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? 29 laps complete, finishing up the first caution of the day for Noah Gregson's crash. He climbed from the car uh, and was okay. Larry, who's got today's subway right combination? Well, I think it's going to be Joey Logano and new track surfaces. In 2012, he won on the new repave at Pocono. About a year ago, 2021, the very first Bristol dirt race. Earlier this year, the L.A. Coliseum on a brand new quarter mile track. You see a trend or a pattern. He won there, too. Even his crew chief, Paul Wolf with Brad Keselowski in 2016, won on the newly repaved Kentucky Speedway. Sounds like to me this new surface may be the perfect subway combination for Joey Logano. That could well be. Uh, the speeding police, uh, Henry County, was out on 19 and 41, just one mile in front of the speedway this morning, uh, creating revenue. And the NASCAR <laughs> speeding police have nabbed Alex Bowman and Greg Biffle, too fast entering pit road on this first caution of the day. Let me tell you something. There, was, there couldn't have been any of them anywhere else because it was literally about every quarter of a mile, every bandit in the air anywhere was over there. So, yeah, <laughs> mind your P's and Q's leaving here today. <laughs> Hands on their feet. <laughs> like what they're seeing here in Atlanta today. Ready to go. Kyle Busch, Chase Briscoe, Ross Chastain, Toyota Ford, Chevrolet up front, and we're back to green. We saw Kyle Busch's hand out the window signaling Chase Briscoe, it's time to go, push, push, push. Didn't get that good lock up on the outside. He was Not wanting exactly what William Byron did for Ross Chastain right there to push him out to the lead. Now the first 22 cars did not come to pit road. I'm so impressed Trackhouse Racing and Ross Chastain, what they've been able to accomplish. Daniel Suarez has been fast. I'm telling you, they're hanging with the big dogs and, and pretty new organization. They have to be proud of what they've seen so far. Well, we talked about new winners with Chase Briscoe last week. I, to me, Ross Chastain has been right there in position to get it done himself for Trackhouse. William Byron to the lead. Byron went to Hickory Speedway last night, hopped in that same late model that he scored two victories at at New Smyrna uh, back in February, and he won the Easter Bunny 150 last night. I can't think of anything of a bigger contrast than Hickory Speedway to Atlanta Motor Speedway today in a stock car for NASCAR. Wow. Chase Briscoe, third in that outside lane. Jamie? Chase Briscoe says his car is just a little bit loose, but that's not his main problem. He told the team he dropped his big water bottle on the floor. Of course, he can't get it. So, Clint, Jeff, what do you guys do in that situation? Hope it don't go under the loud pedal. <laughs> I've had that happen before and freaked out. I'm like, oh, no, don't go under the throttle. Maybe the break here, but I, I got to have that throttle all the yeah, way down through the if, floorboard. If I have been watching. Watch how fast this 18 car pulls up to that lead car in front of them. Every time down the back straightaway, pulls right Huge to the run. bumper. We listened in on Kyle Busch and company. Like the 14, he touched me, right? And got me way loose at the start of the trial. The one, one time, yes. Yeah, so far, no, it was just barely a touch. It wasn't like he drilled me. It's just, yeah, I was loose there. We'll just have to be mindful of that later on, guys. I am noticing that car having so much more straightaway speed with that help, that bump, or whatever. He doesn't even need to be to his bumper every time down the straightaways he pulls to the car in front of him. Oh, oh Briscoe, way up high. I think that was a bump. I think he actually got touched from the 11 of Denny Hamlin and moved him up out of the way, well, got loose. And the track has a little bit of a bump going into turn three over there. Look how much momentum is being lost but, right there. We saw this with Kevin Harvick, his teammate. Now Chase Briscoe loses several positions. Look at all that three wide as a result. Uh, Briscoe was right up there. He has fallen to 13th from top five. Here's another look at it. Chase Briscoe on that outside lane. No one I didn't get near him. 11 didn't get close to him. He got loose getting into Again. that corner. Did not like it. Chased it up the track. Good save. And everybody's pouncing on that opportunity when he lost the momentum. 
Ross Chastain doing a great job here, working both lines. You see William Byron jumped up in front of Kyle Busch. Again, Big coming to that coming. push, utilizing that huge push by Kyle Busch. That's, that's the slingshot right there. It's yeah, the, the old day slingshot, 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 slingshot back. is back. Uh, well, it was engaged in a big way. <laughs> but look at the difference that it did to Kyle Busch. He, he got that big push. Kyle got actually had to get out of it a little bit, allowing his teammate in 11 to get right back to his ball. Kyle Busch gets loose Kyle. going up the racetrack. It's the first time Kyle Busch has been in that inside lane, and I just wonder if that car handles just a little bit different down there on the inside. I don't think he wanted to be down there. I think he had no choice. He had to run and had to do something with it. Well, why not try it now? You've got seven laps to the competition caution. I would think this is a good time to experiment. Absolutely. And, and you know, what you do on these types of tracks is you just take the momentum where wherever it, it comes from, and you just try to keep that momentum going. So if you get a big run, you don't want to check up in the outside lane. Take it to the inside lane. See if the car will stick down there. Something I'm noticing here, typically on these types of racetracks, we see those Fords being able to really lock bumpers and push and shove. We're not seeing where they can do that a whole lot. I just wonder, those Chevrolets, those Toyotas have had good speed at super speedways, but because they can't lock bumpers, they've not been able to take full advantage of these, this style of racetrack. We're seeing that with the Chevrolets as they're one, two, three right now. Ricky Stenhouse leading the inside lane. Now, when we get to turn three, last time by Chase Elliott dropped to the bottom in turn three, like he was going to make a run at Chastain's second spot. He's kind of doing it just like you do at Daytona. When they get single file on a line like that, try to make that pass, get the run down the straightaway, shoot down to the bottom and make a pass. Didn't quite have the momentum this time, but that's what he's working on. Yeah, you for the lead. Oh, here we go. Ross Chastain getting a big run, kind of like what you said that you saw it in the 47 of Stenhouse. He got a big enough, maybe push from behind, a big run, used the draft, was able to drop to the bottom and go right on by. Here's another look. Lo uh, looks a lot like what Kyle Busch did to get the lead. He, he almost like held back to Chase Elliott to get that big push and the momentum and the draft. Really nothing you can do if you're the leader, William Byron, in that situation. But you have to make sure you get clear like there. You don't want to get in and turn one, not be clear. He had the momentum, took the shot, slingshot, engaged. Oh, Denny's not going to get clear here. Nope. And now, see, now he's going to be waiting on, on a ride or clear up. He's going to be waiting, waiting on, on Austin Tyler Dillon, Reddick. or Tyler Reddick, sorry. Well, Bobby Allison is here today. He's got to be smiling, the Hall of Famer. And somewhere up there, David Pearson's looking down and saying, wow, the slingshot's back. This is so <laughs> cool. It's yeah. been a long time since we've seen cars take the lead in that fashion. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, I've, I've enjoyed watching the teams and engineers work in the shops to get these cars prepared to come to the racetrack. But today I'm really enjoying seeing the drivers try to figure out these cars, you know, on the fly, under green flag conditions. They've never, you know, played with anything like this before. As you see William Byron take that lead back from Ross Chastain. And what's so exciting to see is these runs that they're getting. You know, that option's on the table. Do you have a big enough run to make that move, make that pass, and get clear? That's the decision that's on the plate for these guys. Joey Logano goes downstairs and uh, moves up, even with third spot. And he's got help. Yeah, he does have help with Denny Hamlin, who's got a good handling, fast race car. And here comes Tyler Reddick. So look at that big push that Joey Logano was able to get there. But much like we saw out of Denny Hamlin and Denny's teammate uh, Kyle Busch, it's a chess match going on out there. Don't make that move if you can't get clear because you get mired back in traffic and it's the next guy's opportunity. Now, what do you do if you're Ross Chastain? Do you want to hold on to this position, hold back in second, find that slingshot to try to make your move at the last minute? I think you do as long you can afford to take that Take the shot, take the pass, as long as you can get up and get it back in line on that outside. Coming to lap 45, and after the field cycles through, they will wave the goes. competition caution. Chase Elliott might be able to clear. He's going to. Also. They're all shooting to the bottom. And, the caution, and the caution waves. Boy, it's heating up, Jeff. <laughs> But that's what I was saying. I, I'm enjoying watching the drivers play the chess match, trying to figure out 
where the runs are going to be coming from. What's the handling doing? If I have to lift a little bit inside lane, outside lane, how to make that pass and, and get clear? And then how do I maintain the lead if I get out yeah. front? But a little bit of discipline goes in that uh, equation as well. You know, if you again, if you can't make that pass and get clear and get back in line, maybe you better hold on and wait another lap. <laughs> April 16th, the USFL is less than a month away, and they kick off with the New Jersey Generals taking on the Birmingham Stallions. Skip Holtz going to coach Birmingham. He was eight years the head coach at LSU. Mike Riley will be in charge of the New Jersey Generals. And it's an historic game that will appear in primetime on Fox and NBC. April 16th. I want to give these drivers credit, Jeff. These guys, this is a chess match, and it's moving at 100, what, 90 mile an hour out there as they're learning. And they're learning with a little bit of respect to the to the cause, all right? Everybody knows they have to get these cars to the end of this race to win this thing, but you also have to learn. And the only way you can learn is put that baby in a situation. Well, and what we're seeing on track, that's going to put a lot of pressure on these pit crews on pit road as they get ready to change four tires and fuel. Especially on this stop, because every car running is still on the lead lap. Here they come, Regan. Mike, a lot of orders from crew chiefs, chiefs to drivers to wait on the fuel. That means that they don't want them to take off too soon before they get the cars full. The nine to Chase Elliott. Being ginger with the right front tire of that car right now feels like he wants to save that corner just a little bit as this front plays out. The one car, Ross Chastain, still too tight with that race car, much like he was yesterday at times, just a little bit. Jamie? William Byron way better than yesterday, he said. I just need help on my exit so I don't have to worry about it. The 22, Joey Logano's in, too loose in the 12. Ryan Blaney loose all the way around the track, right side tires only. A lot of congestion. Whoa. Bubba Wallace can't get out of his stall because the car ahead couldn't get into his. Yeah, Greg Bittell and Amarillo spun around. That was absolute chaos. Saw a wheel get loose in the 31 pit. And just like I said, four tires. <laughs> yeah. Everybody did. And Chase Briscoe's still on pit road. I mean, here's a guy that was bleeding the race not very long ago. Like well, practice was chaos. Why shouldn't the first segment of this race be the same? We're under caution.
49 laps complete. Stage one is 105 laps long. This will complete the competition caution for teams to check handling and tire wear. Every car came to pit road, and boy, we had our share of calamity. We had the 43 zooming out as the 10 was coming in, and Eric Jones got into Eric Almarola and turned him around. But you called it, Mike. Yeah, you the said, 44, Greg Biffle yeah. all over the place, it, causing havoc for not only Bubba Wallace, but I think it was Kyle Busch right there. Sorry, please. No, I was just going to say, Mike called it about how many cars are on the lead lap or, and were coming down pit road to make pit stops. When you have the spotters and, and everybody on pit road has such an important job to understand which pit stall guys are, are in and coming out of. So you got, you know, Almirola, I don't know, it almost seemed too late for him to be able to do anything any different. To me, that was a spotter call or maybe whoever sends out the crew chief. Crew chief usually chief. calls you out and, and then hands it over to the spotter. Man, it just not but heads they have, up. They have to know that Eric Almirola is coming in Absolutely. and pitting in front of you to say, wait, wait, wait. Maybe a little damage there for Brad Kozlowski from contact. Now, Christopher Bell and Justin Haley. Equipment violation. That's uh, usually something of theirs rolling into somebody else's pit. Haley, and, yeah, the 31 definitely had a tire get loose, rolled into the pit in front of him. And then Kurt Busch had a safety violation on his pit stop. So they will restart at the back. Noah Gregson's in the garage, but he is okay after a hard hit in turn two. Everybody else is still on the lead lap. I don't know that I've ever seen a pit road that much chaos going on at one <laughs> no. time. Didn't know where Laney, to look. Laney back on to get four tires. That's another set of tires. I hate to say, I, it's only happened to me one time. Had the wrong ones on the wrong side or uh, something? Yeah, I know, I wonder if that's. And let's see what happened to Brad Keselowski. Those are the, you know, the, the vents. I think he's got some damage on the front and the hood's not lining up with those vents. And let's get back to Blaney and Jamie. And Ryan Blaney, he struggled on pit road a few races already this year. Once again, they weren't able to get it full. So they came back in, they topped it off, took four tires there, Mike. Joey Logano's Ford, Denny Hamlin's Toyota and William Byron's Camaro will lead the back to green. Ross Chastain, he's not afraid to be aggressive, is he? It, it really backs up what we've seen out of that car all season long. It's got a lot of stability in it. it making, it's making grip for him, gives him the confidence that he can make those aggressive moves. And this isn't the first weekend we've seen that out of that one car or Daniel Suarez's teammate. Here, the RPMs really pick up. I don't know if that was William Byron, who that was. It the was 99, yeah. yeah. You could really hear the RPM pick up as they got that big run, the accordion effect as the spotter was talking about. But he got that, I think the spotter, you know, Kevin Hamlin in his ear saw the big run. The run came from the help from behind him, but he's, you know, he was telling him what was going on in front of the car in front of him, because that accordion and that communication, especially when these guys get down to business at the end of this thing, that's where the trouble's gonna happen. I think it's gonna stack up on an accordion. The driver's not gonna be able to see it. He's gonna run over the car in front of him, and so on and so forth. Here comes Tyler Reddick and Ross Chastain going to the lead. Boy, deja vu all over again from last week. These two kids are hungry to win a race. And Ross, he's got that move down on the front straightaway. Wow, look at that huge <laughs> bump draft. William Byron to the 22 of Joey Logano all the way. I thought Logano would have taken advantage of that, but he decided to stay in line. So you look at Ross backing up to the 24 of William Byron, and now here they come with a bunch of momentum. 
I love the move by Tyler Reddick. He saw that happening. Capitalized. And he capitalized, got to the inside of William Byron. But that's not the first time we've seen that move. Those are the drivers you've been talking about. It. They're learning out here, seeing what they can do. You also saw uh, Joey Logano in that 22 car just decide to stay in line right there. I think that's all being patient. He's watching those runs that those guys are getting, and I think when the time's right, he'll take it. That's a veteran move for sure. Joey hey. Logano's telemetry in. He it takes the break just a little even bit. Even all the way out of the throttle there. He's very content being right there in that position. That's what that shows me. But I think it's because he's being smart. He's getting to get to the end of this stage when the money's on the line looking for those points. He's in a catbird seat right there. He's going to make that move at the end and not necessarily right now. Riding with Kurt Busch, he restarted 34th, and he's picked up three spots. Regan? Mike, interesting comments on Kurt Busch during that last caution. So oftentimes these paint schemes change. Drivers don't always know exactly what scheme each driver has. Take a listen to what he said. Uh, we had to check up an extra second. Saw the 38 coming around there. They're going to make this difficult on us all day, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know what color his car was, so we'll put uh, the picture of people's cars in our little laptop. <laughs> uh, last night, Kurt went up to Indianapolis and called the Supercross for TV. Fun. I watched it on TV. It was a wild one. It was. Well, Tyler Reddick did not end up with a big gain from that move. He got up even with second, third place, but now has that inside lane run out of steam. We've been watching it. See him lifting down the straightaway, not getting that out ahead too far. That's enabling that second place car to get that run. He's managing that distance much like we do at a Daytona or Talladega, Jeff. Yeah, well, he's the one that's been capitalizing on it, so he knows exactly what that guy behind him is wanting to do. Here's a big run from the 22. I don't know that you're going to be able to block that, though. You're going to be forced to, right? At that, some point. When, it, when push comes to shove and we get down to the, again, down to these into the stages and things like that, that run's going to come. It's going to be the, the deciding factor is if he's going to pull down there and try to block it or not. Well, they couldn't block it yesterday. Both of yesterday's races, the Camping World Truck Series and the Xfinity Series, both races were decided by a last lap slingshot. I don't know that they couldn't have. They just decided not to. <laughs> Ross Chastain leading Joey Logano, 61 complete. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on Fox.
You're looking at new leader Joey Logano from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. With you for every mile on the road to greatness, Goodyear, more driven. 66 laps complete. Let's show you the lead change. See, Joey just, he saw that inside lane for him, and I believe, I think he's been content until right there. He got a nice run down the back straightaway. He did exactly what Ross Chastain has been doing to take that lead. And now it's Tyler Reddick's turn. He was in the inside lane with help from the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And Regan, how about those two running together? Well, Mike, working almost that's like they're teammates together, even though they are different teams. Denny Hamlin, a few laps ago, radioed to Tyler Reddick or had his spotter get with Tyler Reddick's spotter and say, tell him to give me a left front headlight out as we get into the corners, meaning he wanted to be able to see just a little bit more on the bottom and maybe help his race car. Tyler started doing that, and you've seen their charge to the front. Jeff Clint, really good when you can work team work together with teams and other cars like that. Yeah, and that's a much needed information. He told him to move up because he needed that headlight poked out to get the front end down, get some air on that nose because he's tight behind him in that wake. With this diffuser in these race cars, that air comes concentrated so much more in the wake behind him. He needs some air so he can get turning and not get tight behind him. Oh, there we got three wide for the lead. And Boy, Joey Logano's a sitting duck. Boy, he is. Wow. Yeah. Watch how many cars he gets passed by. May have an opportunity to get clear up here, but I don't think so. That's going to get gobbled up. He's going to go way back. Saw this yesterday. The same thing. Not a single helper there in that middle lane. So well, there, mid three. Well, I've always heard you don't want to help a car that has a good chance of beating you. <laughs> a learning that was a learning adventure right there. And, and that's something you're going to have to be conscious of when it gets down to this. He opened that door. Tyler Reddy get underneath of him. And look, now he's still three wide trying to figure out how to get some help behind him so he can get back in line. Well, I'm actually impressed he's been able to stall out right there. I thought he would have gone further back. Now he's going to get to the inside Bottom lane. Clear. Still outside here. Austin Dillon cut him a little break there and backed up to Ricky Stenhouse and the 22 was able to drop in. But you're right, Mike. It didn't hurt anybody's feelings to see Joey Logano get shuffled back. He's so good on these types of tracks. They know he's going to be a major threat today. William Byron pushes Ross Chastain out in front of this group. Tyler Reddick in third. And don't look too far back. Daniel Suarez is coming to the picture, teammate to our leader, Ross Chastain. Much like we saw yesterday, though, those leaders got hooked up single file, and those cars behind them are doubled up. It stalls them out a little bit, enabling those cars to get gone. That's a strategy thing that you're learning. Again, going back to this chess match, what's it going to take to get uh, not only a stage win, but the win at the end of this race? This might be the first time those top three guys have been able to take a breath <laughs> throughout this race. But just look at the difference, the advantage they have over those cars doubled up, stalling each other out. Eric Jones up to seventh. Now you saw him get into it with uh, Eric Almarola on an after you, no after you uh, incident down on pit road. But uh, he's climbed back to the top 10 and Alex Bowman is knocking on the door of the top 10. There's Bowman's 48 on the high side in 11th after that uh, penalty on pit road. Well, and going back to Eric Jones, I think they really were working hard on track position there. I bet he didn't even get it full of fuel because we know he was not there in the pits for very long. It also takes me back. I talked about him being doubled up. Logano, he just can't go anywhere. Kind of gridlocked a little bit, stuck where he's at. He's going to have to uh, get a run or something, take advantage of, of uh, somebody else's mishap here. Good day in the early going for Team Trackhouse. Jamie. Daniel Suarez started this race 13th. He told me they gave up a little bit of speed for handling, and they really worked on that in practice yesterday, and it's paying off. He also told me he thought the 18 of Kyle Busch was the car to beat. He wanted to run with him. Look where he is, right on his bumper. Right where he needs to be. Love when a good plan comes together. <laughs> Jeff, we're hearing that some of these smaller Chevrolet teams are benefiting from an unprecedented level of cooperation between Chevrolet teams in the early season. Yeah, I think Chevrolet has really doubled down their commitment in NASCAR and, and how they can support all the race teams. But uh, it's not just the big three that we talk about with Childress and Hendrick and Trackhouse. It's all the way through the field. 
And so, you know, the more you can keep that communication and the data and, and different types of information streaming to all the teams, whether it be in the wind tunnel, or CFD, or simulation, the better all your teams are going to be and contribute. It's a long way of saying a rising tide lifts all boats. That's what I meant to say, Mike, but I knew That's you could okay. say it for me. <laughs> 76 laps complete. Ross the boss out in front in Atlanta. Fox Corporation has helped raise over $11 million for the American Red Cross to support their mission of providing aid and resources, including food, water, medical supplies, and housing support to the people in Ukraine and to those who have been forced to leave their homes. Join us in supporting the Red Cross relief efforts. You can donate by visiting redcross.org slash foxforward or just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Ross Chastain, your leader, at 82 laps complete from William Byron, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. The first Ford is Joey Logano back in 11th, then Austin Sindrick in 15th as the Chevys and Toyotas lead here. Huge run for Tyler Reddick off the bumper. I think of uh, the 99 car of Daniel Suarez. I can't give this track enough props, man. We, he fought Marcus Smith fought these drivers including me don't change this track don't repave it never repave this place we all love slipping and sliding around on the old configuration but i'm telling you his new vision for this place adding a, a super speedway type of event to atlanta for his fans man i i, I can't say enough about the well, vision there. and you know clint as a driver you do love you love the, the the fact that this track was worn out and you got to slide around. But I got to tell you, the first time I came up here into the booth with Mike and DW yeah. at that time, I said, DW, I'm so excited. It's Atlanta. He goes, yeah, wait till about lap 15. <laughs> and he was right. It just it didn't put on the entertaining race as much as it felt entertaining from inside the car. This right here, to me, is challenging the drivers and putting on a heck of a race. Cody Ware becomes the first car to go a lap down. Lap car staying low on the racetrack. And you know, you do get gobbled up quick, don't you? So 500 miles at Daytona takes 200 laps. Here to get to 500 miles, you have to go around this place 325 times. Uh, I would imagine this is a much harder day's work. No doubt. I mean, these corners are going to put a lot more on your body. I think right now, as intense as the racing is, it's also mentally challenging you a lot more. You're watching your mirror. You're listening to your spotter. You're trying to decide what lanes and pick and choose, when to make the run happen, how to back up to the guy behind you. I mean, it's 
It's definitely, we, we, the word today is intense, and it certainly has been. It definitely goes right to the point you were trying to make. The old configuration, you get out of here, you were slop wore out physically. Today, mentally, this chess match is going to wear these guys down. It's going to drain them mentally. Kurt Busch had a safety violation on his pit stop and restarted 34th. He's in the top 10. You act like you're surprised, Mike. Come on, it's well, Kurt Busch. It's Kurt Busch, yes, but... <laughs> Whoa! Daniel Suarez jumping right up in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. there. But it's because of this super speedway type of racing, these huge runs that you just saw uh, Ricky Stenhouse and Tyler Reddick. These big runs create opportunities, opportunities for guys to make a, a, a run to the, the deal, just like we were talking about with Kurt Busch. Now, from our Goodyear aerial coverage, look at the first car on the inside. That's Tyler Reddick. When he doesn't have help, it is hard to go forward. Yeah, he really needs those guys to be a little more organized, bumper to bumper, especially right there when Daniel Suarez decided to switch lanes. Look how quick he goes backwards. It hurts even worse. And then how it stacks that bottom lineup because Kurt Busch behind him had to drag the brake, slow his down. Now that accordion happens, now he lost more track time. Brad Kozlowski, Regan kind of hanging on to the tail end of the lead lap here. What's up? Mike, that's correct. One of the guys we would have expected to have been very aggressive and up towards the front today. Brad Kozlowski having a lot of trouble with that race car. Damage to the nose of it when they came to pit road for the first pit stop of the race. Then lost his spotter for about 15 laps. He does have his spotter, TJ Majors, back now. But things not going well for Brad at the moment. No, nope, he is in 30 second, 30, uh, 14 seconds back of the leader. Now, Jamie McMurray's been looking at driver analytics and telemetry. What stands out to you? Well, the first thing that sticks out to me, Mike, is, is watching Ross Chastain control this draft. Clinton Jeff talked about not running wide open, even though he's in the lead, backing up to that, hoping the guy in second can't generate the run. The other thing that we've been looking at is the steering trace, and you can tell how tight or loose the car is by how much wheel input they have. And, when it was reported that Suarez set up a car that had more grip versus more speed, I went to his steering trace. He's turning the wheel quite a bit, but so is Ross Chastain, so is Tyler Reddick. It seems like some of these guys that are better on the long run maybe have just a little bit tighter balance. Oh. There's that steering trace. Jamie was talking about the telemetry lower left corner, Daniel Suarez. So there's straight up, right, as, as you go down the straightway. Now here's that white line starts to put more wheel into the further left that it goes. See the same thing here with Ross Chastain. Now, remember, you got to turn a little bit left through this double dog leg down the front straightaway. See how much input he puts into this corner. And that just tells me that those guys have just a little bit more security in the back of their car. Might be why Ross Chastain's pushing so hard to get out front. He wants that clean air to the nose. Yeah, but the biggest thing I notice is how those guys are maneuvering the throttle. They're, they're maneuvering the runs that they have, managing those, uh, the, the help that comes from behind them, how quick they approach the car in front of them. All of that's managed with the throttle. You know, guys, one of the things that, that I'm wondering is we talk about a car being trimmed out. Uh, or, or having more grip and, and knowing that these Chevys have, have went for a, a setup that's going to drive a little better, have a little more drag in it, the Toyotas have went a different approach. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, they're not turning the wheel very far. They seem to be trimmed out a little bit more. And I'm just curious, you think they're maybe down a little bit on power to compared to what the ECR uh, Hendrick Motorsports engines have? That's a very good question. I mean, I would think that, oh, leaders in the wall. Easy, stay low. And caution is out. There, stay up. It's 10. He did a heck of a job of not sending that car all the way around. See how much Left damage. Rear blue, right side hit the wall. Right rear tail first. Oh boy. Steering still straight. Feels like the rear straight. I think the right rear. The right blue. rear. Well, the left rear might have been down. Ross Chastain had led five times for 42 laps. Look at the leader here. Goes into turn one, gets into the banking. Boom, Boom goes down, round he goes. I don't know that that car's tore up all that bad. 
The only thing, you know, with the left front was that independent rear suspension, you do get that toe link that bends really easy when you hit the right rear like that. Boy, uh, how lucky is that? All those cars behind him, the whole pack literally behind him could have been catastrophic for everybody behind him. That was the big one that was So he locked avoided. up the left front tire, I think, after the, yeah. the, the hit. And that That's blew what that. blew that down. The question is, he sat, said on the radio, he thought the left rear went down. Larry, you got 10 laps to go in this stage. What do you want to do? Well, if I'm back there in the second half of the field, I'm going to come on and get my tires and fuel now. But if you're worried about stage points, we're going to go back racing with not that many laps until the end of this stage. So I would say you're going to see a mixed bag here, Mike. Cody Ware gets the free pass on this third caution of the day. Uh, the team started the race with 12 sets of tires, plus a set held over from qualifying, and those would be brand new sticker tires uh, since qualifying was canceled due to rain. You know, Clint, I, I'm not sure if he, if Ross Chastain got the right rear. It looked like it was more just the body, and you know, with these uh, body panels, they just kind of pop back out. Uh, he, he might have more damage to the right front right now. Jeff, I know right you're now in, a, in your new job is to pay for those new body <laughs> panels a little bit, but I'm telling you, these cars are strong. I don't think he hurt that car much by the contact on the right rear of that thing. As long as everything, I mean, you can see it right there. He hit hard, but I don't think he's his day is done by any stretch of the imagination. It's just so hard to tell if the it was left a right rear because the left, seems right the left front come up. That's why the left front is way up in the air. Now he did a good job of, of minimizing the damage for not only his car but everybody behind him. That left front was not turning. Yeah, it's almost that's because the right rear was the down. Right rear was okay, exactly. left front up. That's what happens when you get into the wall at 185 miles an hour. Look here. at that thing! It's that's race cool. ready. Let's go back racing. That's the left front. That's, a That's the right rear that blew out. Yep. It's looking. Like, I mean, literally come apart. Yeah. All these, all these teams are going to be looking at camber and and uh, air pressures and everything else to figure out was there anything that caused that right rear to go down. That's a very good point, and that's something that is new with these cars. The camber. I noticed in the garage area the rear camera of these cars. These are independent rear suspension. A lot of difference in the cameras that they are able to accomplish with the independent rear suspension. All right, pit road is open. Let's see who wants track position and who wants tires. From 10th on back, they're headed for pit road. Some want stage points, some want tires. Setting themselves up for track position towards the end. Heard a lot from Mark Drex Jr. And here's why we are under caution. Leader Ross Chastain cuts a tire and gets into the wall.
Universe. Will the Beast Brock Lesnar get payback on the Universal Champion Roman Reigns ahead of their match at WrestleMania? Find out on an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, 99 laps complete. Uh, kids are having a good time here. And a lot of Chase Elliott fans in the stands. Here's how the Koch family of drivers are faring. With six to go in stage one, Danny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, top five, Daniel Suarez, top ten, and Joey Logano in 15. Ross Chastain, improper fueling on his stop. Right rear toe link is straight. Obviously, we've got a little bend, a uh, little toes knocked out in the front. Uh, right rear wheel tub has some damage. Some of it's missing, and the right rear droop chain is broke. And then a little bit of body damage. Looks like maybe a right rear diffuser. Uh, a little bit of damage on it as well. Let's feel it out good here. So he's on the damage vehicle policy and uh, has incurred a two-lap penalty. Damage to the left front splitter as well. Ty Dillon removed the gas can from his pit stall. So he will be starting tail end of the longest line. William Byron in a Chevy and Denny Hamlin's Toyota will lead them back to green. Five to go in stage one. and Dillon trying to hold off those two Toyota teammates and here comes Hamlin without the help of his teammate oh 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 Wreck. two cars hard in the wall and Austin Dillon Kyle Busch crash Stay up there. behind him stacking up behind him Ty Dillon into the wall and Chase Briscoe last week's winner spinning that was that split second decision. The uh, 18 didn't decide to go with Denny. Kind of Denny was waiting. I think he anticipated him to go. He hold it, uh, waited just a heartbeat and then took off. Put Kyle Busch uh, in that outside lane and the rest is history. Well, it looked like it got kind of Austin Dillon a, a little bit out of position too. And maybe that car got a little loose. And then you had the 18 on the outside of him. There's Ty Dillon with a bunch of damage. Both Dillon brothers. Heavy damage under that accident. So let's look at this going into turn number three and watch Denny Hamlin in the 11 make his move. Makes it really late. As I you don't, mentioned. Yeah, I don't think it was as quick as Kyle Busch said. Watch, see, Austin Dillon was uh, blocking a little bit, makes the move. Kyle Busch decides to go up top, gets watch to the, the bumper, three get the three, he loose. gets ah, loose. Touched him. It looked like he got to the rear bumper of Austin Dillon and Kyle then turned Bush him is, sideways. He is second guessing that decision right now. Yeah, I, I don't think he thought Denny was going to clear the three of Austin Dillon, so he didn't go with him. All right, let's ride with Dillon. Dropping inside, inside. 18 sticking with us. Bottle's clear by one to the bottom. Boy, he was just... Uh, if, he didn't touch him, he, I don't I think. I think it's he just, touched him, but it was barely. Yeah. It, I wouldn't it have thought that much. would have gotten him loose, but it did. See it start to bobble right there. Almost maybe when Danny jumped up in front of him too, took a little bit of downforce away from the three. Yep, it's like yep. a, a bad combination. The 18 on his rear bumper, the 11 coming up in front of him. Pretty heavy right front damage to the 18 of Kyle Busch. And then further back, Ty Dillon trying to avoid everything gets into the wall and then into Chase, Chase Briscoe. So uh, we will end stage one under caution. Here's uh, Kyle Bush and company. How's your wheel? It's killed. Everything is killed. I'm sure I'll get to you and everything will be broken and we'll be done for the day. Yeah, a lot of frustration right there. I mean, those are those, again, split-second decisions. Things happen so fast. That move, didn't really expect it out of Denny Hamlin. It's kind of late. It was, it could have, would have, should have thought about going with him, stayed up high to, to push Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon gets loose, and, man, that's a tough pill to swallow. 
had a fast car. Be curious to see what, what kind of damage when they lift the hood or pull those tires off of the 18 of, of what they might be able to change. There are some adjustments that they can make pretty quickly on this new car that can fix some of the, that damage. Ty Dillon, not that back you're not going to fix some of those. No, <laughs> but he was back there because of a penalty and uh, restarted in the back, had to take evasive action, got into the wall and then into uh, Chase Briscoe. Yeah, that's the kind of damage when you see the body crinkled up like that. That's very difficult to get that car back up to speed. So William Byron picks up his 10th career stage win and his second of the season. For Hendrick Motorsports, ahead of Denny Hamlin, Daniel Suarez, Ricky Stenhouse, and Eric Jones. Four Chevrolets in the top five, led by this young man from Charlotte. The end of stage one, William Byron, the stage winner. Let's show you once again what put us under caution. Let's go way back to turn two. You can see the rear bumper and the front bumper of teammates Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, almost locking together there. Here comes a big run, big push. What I'm impressed with is Denny waited, right? He could have made the move there. He waited till he got into the corner and then dove to the bottom. But Clint, why did the 18 not go with Denny? Well, I think it was late, just like you said. And Austin Dillon, I think, had a little bit to do that as well. He got to run the help from Denny coming on him and looked to the outside of the leader, William Byron, didn't exactly take that bottom line that Denny did. It just, it was a situational thing that ended up in a catastrophic way for Kyle Busch. So here are the cars that did not stop under the last caution, Regan. Well, Mike Denny Hamlin with the 11 car, a little tight right now following other cars, but doesn't want any changes, wants to just work on that car and look in the mirror and help himself as a driver. And the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse, good with his balance. Jamie? 
William Byron said he felt better in the corners there. Very balanced car right now. No adjustments for tires. The 99 of Daniel Suarez as well. Just tires. Very happy with the car. Starts off edgy, but ends up pretty good. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. Tires? We don't need tires. <laughs> You say we dial up old Willie B there, the 24. Willie B, hey, it's Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth, buddy. Looking good out there in that Liberty Chevrolet. How about it? Yeah, man. Great talking to you. No, it's been good. Uh, crazy Atlanta. I feel like you got to be on your toes every single lap, and it's uh, a lot different than we're used to here. So it's been fun so far. Car's been really fast. Thanks to everybody at, at Hendrick Motorsports and Liberty, and uh, hopefully we we can finish it off here at the end of the day. All right, buddy. Well, uh, you know I like those flames, so keep up the great work. Good luck the rest of the way. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. William Byron, your stage one winner in Atlanta. Both Dillon brothers knocked out in that crash. He was celebrating earlier, but right now, not so much. That little guy kicking it old school. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Sr. hat on, love it. Talk about a guy that used to be able to get around this place. Look at the right of your screen. That's how it funnels off into turn number one right there. Yeah, you can certainly see right there. It goes from what, four lanes 
to basically just two lanes right in through here. Big difference of how that funnel situation happens. I think restarts, they're only going to get more chaotic because of that funnel situation getting into turn one. Drivers have chosen their lane for the restart. Now, yesterday in the Xfinity race, that was a problem late in the day as the sun got close to the horizon. Uh, that Choose V and the uh, reflective triangles on the wall to help the drivers find it uh, became a problem for a couple of them, and that may well happen again today. Christopher Bell in a Toyota with Austin Sindrick and a Ford, the Daytona 500 winner. They will be on the front row. Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace, Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick. And we're going to listen to Bubba Wallace's spotter, Freddie Kraft, the number 23, on this restart. This will begin stage number two. Stage one was all Chevrolet with a bit of Toyota. The Ford's nowhere to be found. Now there are four Fords to restart in the top seven positions. Camaro pace car heads for pit road and here they come to the Geico restart zone. Five. Ready. Go green. Back to your helm. Tight out the front. Still tight out the front. Quarter out the front. Third either lane. Top's got a little more momentum. Split up now, top, half back to the bottom. So half back, bottom, one out the front. Bottom's gonna split up now. Still one out the front. Still one. Just keep top here. One back to the 34. One out the front. Well, that sounds like Daytona and Talladega, doesn't it? It's well, exactly we, what it is. Yeah, we talk about intense. It's intense for those guys on the roof. They've got a lot going on today. Go through a few batteries, I believe, on that radio. Well, and as we get towards the end of this race, all that communication, it's got to be locked solid. You have to, when it's clear, and it has, you have to make a reaction quick. As a driver, he's got to be on, on point with his communication, those calls. These runs happen fast. All right, we talk about Daytona Super Speedways. We're here in Atlanta. This is a Super Speedway now. And look who's coming to the front, our Daytona 500 winner there, Austin Dillon. And who's behind him? Bubba Wallace and Michael McDowell. Those guys all run good at Daytona in these super speedways. Yeah, I haven't really seen Austin Sendrick in that two car much yet. But just like you said, uh, Daytona 500 winner the car was extremely fast. Had a lot of grip for him at the Daytona 500. And lo and behold, here he is. And right and on his bumper, the car that finished right alongside him in second place. Bubba Wallace. You see how that stacks up and then creates that moment for Joey Logano. Those are the moments that are exactly like what we saw with Denny Hamlin and, and Kyle Busch, his teammate, to create those situations that you either take it or you don't. And that thing, accordion for him, kind of really left him no place to go but right but, there. And, and you mentioned accordion, and that's what I'm looking for in my spotter. I want my spotter to anticipate, see that accordion effect starting and letting me know so I can jump out of line if I need to. Regan? Well, Jeff, tough break for Austin Dillon in the three car up front again this week as you are every week. Austin, did you have trouble and have to check up off a of turn four or not? No, I was in the gas wide open and uh, 18's pushing us on the left rear from what I saw and got me loose and took us both out of the race, but didn't help that the other two cars were coming up the track, so it took some air off the nose, but I mean, he's already got me turned right there. I into stage one we're going to get a run down the bat in the front stretch right there so i don't know why he's pushing like dead center three-quarter mark but part of it i guess and fun race in there for a while with a really fast fast pro shop chevy i don't want to say anything else my, my feelings are hurt because two weeks in a row we've been taking out the race thanks for talking to us austin austin dylan and his younger brother ty both knocked out of the race in that incident off turn four and down the front straight away i can understand the frustration last weekend, last lap, literally the last corner, minding his own business, just going to get him a clean top 10 finish. And Daniel Suarez has come flying in there and, and nailed him in the rear, spun him out, and pretty much a last place finish. So I can understand that frustration in Austin Dillon. 
Well, guys, it took a couple of trips to pit road, but I believe old Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick, they brought the old four car to life. He just cracked the top five. You see him right there, the fifth car in line. So definitely from a car that couldn't even run inside the top 20 or 25, the top five here. Christopher Bell, your leader, Austin Sindrick, and then Bubba Wallace in third, Jamie. Bubba Wallace, after practice yesterday, was all smiles, loved the way the car felt. He wanted to go out and run more, but his crew chief, Booty Barker, said, nope, we're bringing it in. We're going to park it so we can keep it good for today. And that's exactly what they've done. They tightened him up a bit. He was a little insecure earlier, but Bubba Wallace, you can never count him out on this style of racing, the pack racing, as he tries to make his way to first. Well, I heard your interview with him in practice, and he was kind of like a petulant child. It was like, I want to go out and play with those guys. I don't want to be here in the garage. Here He's comes the plenty. four car and Kevin Harvick trying his hand on the bottom, getting a big run, get big push from Martin Truex Jr. Whoa. You can see it moving his car around. But I think it's all, you're going to have to utilize that help and keep those cars behind you as they broke off. Uh, Truex got him loose and had to lift off the gas. So you can see how that hurt their momentum. But Mike, going back to what you're saying, you want, this is the type of track when it's new like this and you have a lot to figure out a new car and a new surface, as well as a totally different style of racing here at Atlanta in a mile and a half, you want as much practice time, as many laps as you can get. So I know that was frustrating. Well, guess what? They got 500 miles to try to figure it out now in this race. 500 miles of practice today. Yeah. Christopher Bell breaks away here by about two or three car lengths as Kevin Harvick tries to get that inside line to develop some momentum to his benefit in the front. He keeps inching a little bit closer and closer. Him and the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. is working that. See the run that he gets, pushes to oh, him. He's he used get a the brake right here. there, slowed down. You can see he tiptoed a little bit. I think he's breaking away. He's, he's slowing down to help Truex get back to him, utilize the push, and see if it'll push him to the lead. And I think, too, if you get too big of a run into three, that, that we talked about earlier, the wind and just the flatness of that entry makes the car push up almost clear of Christopher Bell to take that lead. But I think Kevin Harvick is managing that. Like we've talked about, you heard Jimmy McMurray talk about slowing down, lifting a little bit, keeping that car attached to you. Don't utilize that huge run that he gives you and drive off from him. Let's see if he slows down just the least little bit, allowing that 19 to get to him. Halfback. Yeah, he's liking that Clear push he got from Mark Drex Jr. Right. Wants to continue to tow him right along with him. Kind of repay. As he gets a push. I'm going to see this off of two. I think he'll be good now that he's clear of the 20. But having that 20 beside him, you have to manage that. You can't get too far out. This is the most double wide racing we have seen all season. Anywhere we've been, including Daytona. Including Daytona. That's why we're going to take you side by side with 122 laps complete in Atlanta. Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex.
128 laps complete. Kurt Busch is the leader here in Atlanta. So how do you like me now, says the new Atlanta Motor Speedway. We've had more lead changes today than in both of last year's races combined. Now let's look at a pivotal moment for Kevin Harvick, who now finds himself in 11th after this in the lower right. Well, Kevin looks a little bit indecisive here, like he was going to go up to block the, the run coming from the outside, the 20 of Christopher Bell. And then Mark Drex Jr. just said, oh, if you're going to take the outside, I'm going to go to the inside. And then that put Kevin Harvick right in the middle, three wide. I don't know if Tim told him, you know, inside already, and that's why he didn't hold down and try to block the 19. But it definitely, that's what created that situation to get three wide. I don't think Truex really had a choice at that point. It sent Harvick back to 12th place. He's since regained three of those positions. Once he lost that lead, I definitely noticed the instability in Kevin Harvick's car. So he needs to get that track position and be up front. Ricky Stenhouse becomes the 13th different driver to lead this race. <laughs> And how about Justin Haley right behind him? We talk about new winners and new faces and new places. There's a new cat right here. Jeff, They've we talked fat. yesterday, Clint and I did, that I don't think win and you're in is going to work this year. With what we've seen so far and what we're seeing today, I could easily see more than 16 winners at the end of the regular season. Well, I've always been a little bit hesitant to say win and you're in and this early in the season because we have seen, we've come close a couple of years ago, Mike, right? We saw about 13, 14 different winners and a lot of them happen early in the season. But you're right, one of these years, it's not going to be a total lock and if you get that win. And with this car, as, as the parity and the different people we're seeing get up front lead races, I think we could see a lot of different winners. This time it's Daniel Suarez caught on the outside and he almost got a fender full going into turn one. Three abreast and all the way back at the sixth or seventh row here and dropping spots as it happens. Daniel. I did not think we'd see that today. Well, I, Daniel got into the wall there a little bit. I don't think it's enough for him to be worried about. I don't think he wants to be three wide, boys. He <laughs> no, can't, no. He can't right, keep from it. Damage. Two in. Watch your racing here. You're going to be clear behind the 43. Clear behind the 43. See, Denny goes, makes it three wide to the inside. Ooh, oh, the 17 of Busher had to check up there. So it looked like when Daniel had to go to the outside of him and make it three wide, he just ran out of room. I've seen that 17 of Chris Busher sideways several times catching, and I think it's just all that dirty air, three wide scenario around him made him really loose. Now Tyler the Reddick. blocking's going to start happening. <laughs> well, it's Tyler Reddick in the eight, and Kurt Busch have linked up on the outside now, looking back from Busch's bumper cam. Hey, well, William Byron's got a, a fast car, but he's got a good handling car, too. He's been able to make up a lot of spots after coming down pit road. And how about the job? I mean, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but Justin Haley, that kid's been impressive, I think, of starting the season off at the Clash, the Coliseum, how good he was there. Ran pretty good at Daytona. Now here he is up front. Jamie? Mike, you can never count Colleg racing out, especially at this style of track. Remember, Justin Haley won at Daytona a couple of years ago. That's his one and only win in the Cup Series. Multiple wins on Super Speedways in the Xfinity Series. But remember, today he's got an interim crew chief, Caleb Williams, on the box. Trent Owen suspended for four weeks. Of course, they lost a wheel back a few weeks ago. So great job for this team coming together here at Atlanta. Uh, good point, Jamie. They were one of two teams that appealed the four week suspension for uh, losing a lug nut and wheel and both uh, in both of those appeals NASCAR's decision was upheld. Starting to see some of these cars having handling issues I see the 45 of Kurt Busch shooting to the outside getting a little bit tight getting into three. I think all those massive runs that they get down that back straightaway shoots them off into the corner again straight on the back straightaway dog leg on the front creates a little bit different scenario but, but in the don't you of the corner don't you believe you saw that bump draft from Tyler Reddick to the 31 Justin Haley's could take the lead there but you, you got to believe as as much of a pack as these cars are in not a lot of air getting to the cars further back and I would think as the, these laps 
continue to click off, there's going to be some air pressure that's going to be, get built Bottom. up in those tires. Whoa! Ricky Stenhouse had Haley all jacked up. Very yep. loose. Right Great save by Justin Haley right there. Another three wide scenario. Be so patient. Haley patience is right. became be the race's third, uh, 15th different leader. The record, all time record for Atlanta Motor Speedway in any configuration, is 17 different drivers to lead one race. And we're not even to halfway. I was going to say, we're going to break that. We might double that, Mike. He's trying to get in. He was trying to cut in right there behind the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Hole closed up, couldn't get in as well. I think he actually got into the right rear of Denny Hamlin trying to get back in line. These runs are so massive, they're getting Stenhouse right there, shooting to the bottom again. Big runs. Watch his push. I think Reddick got too far out in the lead right there. Now he's going to have to try to block enabling Stenhouse to get a run on the bottom. And that's what Ross Chastain, I thought, did so well when he was up front. He never let his car get too far out there for anybody to buy behind him to get the momentum and build up that, mo um, you know, that run. And look at Kevin Harvick back in the picture. After falling to 12, he has climbed to fifth. And that car's wagging its tail. It's still loose. Hold, having to hold on to it in turn three. It's loose, but it's fast. <laughs> Stenhouse trying to lead for the second time today. Not this time. 141 laps complete. Still almost 70 to go in stage two at Atlanta in the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 on Fox. Tyler Reddick cut down a right rear tire and went around in mayhem. He sure did, and just like the one of Ross Chastain right in front of the field. This time collected a lot more cars. Yeah, when you're up front like that, there are two wide stacked behind you. See Tyler Reddick in the outside. Right here, the car's going to wiggle. Looks to me like a right rear tire going down. Corey 
Taylor LaJoy had a rough ride there. Kyle Larson got turned. Joey Logano was in it. Christopher Bell. Watch what this does, how everybody's scrambling for position, stacking everybody up. The middle, the middle, the middle, the middle, lower, 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 lower. Boy, nice job making it through there clean. Let's ride with Kevin Harvick. That'll get your heart rate up. Oh, no right in his lap. Nothing he could do. But you could see the car drop down almost like the wheel when the tire uh, went down, the, the wheel digging into the racetrack right in front of Kurt Busch. So we are under caution at lap uh, 146. What a great time <laughs> to welcome Hall of Famer, Cy Young Award winner, Atlanta Brave World Series star, and Fox lead baseball analyst John Smoltz to the booth. Yeah, how about that? Right, your, your heart right rate up, up after here. that? Yeah, yeah. I, that's uh, it's like a clearing the bench situation in baseball, right? <laughs> Been in a few of those. It's definitely a, the heart gets racing. So what do you think? I mean, you're here at Atlanta, your first NASCAR race. Been pretty great racing out yeah. there. What do you think so I've far? I've missed a lot. This is my first race that tell me how much I've had a blast and I've missed a lot. You know, my schedule takes me all over the place. Getting to experience this and see it firsthand, I'm spoiled because I got the cherry on top by driving the pace car, which is undescribable. I kind of feel like this. It's like coming into the bases loaded, nobody out and facing Albert Pools. That's what these guys are doing every single time. But Okay, so you went out there in the pace car, and then you see these guys running two, three wide inches away from one another at 190 miles per hour. Are you even able to comprehend what that must be like? No, the coolest part was watching the rearview mirror of the, the camera, and you see them all behind you jockeying and getting ready for their warm-up and everything, and you just know they're ready to get unleashed and what that would be like. I actually asked on the way down here, because I drove about an hour and changed to get down here and what happens if you sneeze <laughs> like has anybody ever sneezed i guess you never do because it's we barely dramatic. blink let alone sneeze <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right uh john i want to put you inside kurt bush's car okay and uh, and take us through this yeah this has got to be the quickest reaction you can ever have right and that's like getting hit with uh, a line drive right about now just got to react as fast as can and that's why Get that up, right? That, Sometimes that, you just can't do anything about it. That looks to me like facing one of your 90 mile an hour sliders. <laughs> Maybe being on the other. You know, I always wanted to see what it would like to be on the other side. <laughs> Nobody of else wanted to see what that. <laughs> no. But this truly has been a what a blast. I mean, you know, perfect day, perfect weather here in Atlanta, and of course, getting a chance to meet meet Chase, who went to the school that I I helped start, Kings Ridge Christian School, and just getting a back, really behind the scenes look at everything was really cool. We'll come back and see us and I'm bring friends. I'm definitely going to do it. I definitely will. You All look right. good out the there blast. pacing the field. You sure? I mean, we can get you in a helmet. Get I, suited up. I didn't want to make a viral moment, but I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take off. That would have been a, maybe a not good viral <laughs> moment. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Hall of Thank Famer you. John Smoltz. Glad to have you with us here. But, wow, mayhem. Uh, when the eight car lost a tire and spun in front of the field, Kurt Busch was the first car in. Christopher Bell uh, with minor damage. Kyle Larson got turned. And there's going to be a big, long list of cars that were involved in that one and have some level of damage. Now, we are still under caution. There has been no red flag. So cars are being worked on on pit road, including Larson, Kyle Busch, Cole Custer, Todd Gilliland, uh, here's Reddick coming down pit road for uh, a second trip and more and pit road will be open this time for the rest of the competitors. Now before they come in let's uh, look at one of the questions in Clint stage two contest on the Fox bet super six app. Good luck. <laughs> How many lead changes in stage two zero to five six to ten ten to fifteen and lots more. With this kind of racing, it could be anything. Regan. 
Mike, what a recovery so far for the four car. Kevin Harvick, big changes on that car early to get it to where it is now. Very happy with that race car at the moment. The 47 of Ricky Sandhouse Jr. has been good. Needs more rear grip after that run. He's sliding the back. Jamie? William Byron says balance on that car really good right now. Good stop for him as well. The 20 of Christopher Bell. They stayed out last time. He's led 16 laps today. Much better that run. No adjustments. Four tires. Woo! That was tight. William Byron first off pit road with two tires. Harvick Blaney and Al Marola and Eric Jones all with big games on that pit stop. 13 cars were involved in that incident down the front straightaway. We'll give you a look at the list when we come back. B.J. McLeod is your leader here in Atlanta. So, so Clint Jeff. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Built for America. Under caution with 151 complete because of the Tyler Reddick incident down the front straightaway, or lost a tire. And here are the cars that were involved in the crash. Now, none of them have gone to the garage. All those cars under repair and back out on track. Two penalties, Martin Truex, too fast exiting pit road, and Daniel Suarez pitting out of the box, which used to be a one lap penalty, and now it's a tail end of the longest line. There's our spoiler cam on uh, the back of Kurt Busch's uh, Monster Energy Toyota. Larry has more. 
Yeah, Mike, uh, one thing that NASCAR did, they went with the Daytona rules package here for Atlanta because of the speed. So let's go to our Ford Performance Cutaway car and let's talk about the rear spoiler. Of course, that affects aero drag as far as rear downforce. So here at Atlanta, just like Daytona and Talladega, seven inches tall. Everywhere else, like the, oh, the West Coast Swing, only four inches. So this spoiler here, a lot more drag, a lot more rear downforce, and Clinton Jeff, that's another thing that causes them to poke a big hole in the air that lets it get these runs on these cars. No doubt about that. There's a perfect view of it. Right rear quarter panel from Kurt Busch. I promise you that camera didn't like what he just saw. <laughs> no. Tyler Reddick will be held for two laps. Uh, too many men over the wall. Listen, I was just about to say something about this 18 car of Kyle Busch, don't count him out yet. He's still on the lead lap. He was making lap times almost as good as, as the guys in front of him there. They still got a long way to go where they could repair this number 18. Well, we knew attrition. Anytime you have a super speedway type of racing, attrition, just getting to the end of this thing, avoiding the big one. We just saw it, you know, the eight, the eight of, of Reddick here. You can see the damage on the front of his car. Well, remember That's Bubba bad. Wallace at Daytona, he had one uh, the right front fender, I think, completely gone, left right. front or right front at the end of that race. Right front. Now, as I mentioned going to break, B.J. McLeod was the leader. That's because he and Corey LaJoy uh, waited a lap to pit. So he was out there, led. Now he's made his pit stop, cycled back to the tail end of the lead lap. We're going to listen to Ryan Blaney's spotter, Josh Williams, on this restart. Blaney will line up third behind William Byron and Kevin Harvick. Start off. Ten away. Five. Ready. 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 Green. Your help's one off. That 43 help is two off. Still one back. Your help. Still one back. Two back now. Great cooperation on both lines. Both Harvick and Blaney on the outside. William Byron, Eric Jones on the inside. Harvick and Blaney are still together though, and look at the advantage. Well, they made that look easy. Kyle Busch returned to pit road for repairs to the right rear. Uh, Tyler Reddick has been released from pit road. And here they come with Harvick in front of Blaney, Byron, and Eric Jones. Well, the 18 still on pit road, so he, now he's going to lose all those laps that they were trying to maintain. Watching Blaney there working well before that wreck with Logano, his teammate. Now he's got to find a new ally. Those allies are your manufacturer help. And you can see him working with the four of Kevin Harvick. Boy, Blaney tried to dive down in front of William Byron. Couldn't hold the line. Eric Jones doing a nice job. When you have a big wreck like that, it's new opportunity for new people. Now you see the 10, Eric Almirola back in the mix. A new car up there, somebody that runs very well on the restrictor plate type tracks. Harvick's Ford trying to hold off the Chevys of Byron and Jones. Blaney coming up the outside in a Mustang with Almirola. Caution, debris on the front straightaway. There is Kevin Harvick's graph of his day. Remember in the early laps when he fell way back in the field. And then at the competition caution, uh, which occurred there at lap 42, they were able to make repairs and uh, and get him going again. Well, it kind of looks like my, my heart rate through this race. It's yeah. been a little bit okay, you know, easy when they get single file. They get back packed up three wide where Kevin's been a few times. It's all over the uh, place. But I don't think anybody's line has been any different than that. They've been to the front. They've been to the back. They've been back to the front all over the place. Backwards at times. Cole Custer has taken his car to the garage. He was involved in that big dust up. And Ross Chastain now gets the free pass for the second caution in a row. He's back on the lead lap. We listened in on Chase Elliott and his team. So just to FY for you, the guys that we, of the guys we know that blew those right rears, they had more camera than we do. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, you can definitely tell when that air comes up. I mean, that's the trend so far we've noticed this year. 
And there you have it. Well, that, I mean, listen, if I'm a driver out there and I've seen two other guys that, that you know, especially Chevys that share information, you, you want to know what they have. So that's nice that that collaboration allows them to understand and know what the camber is and know that it's a little bit more than what Chase Elliott and some, maybe some of these other Chevys I don't have. get this right very often, what Jeff. I want some credit. I called camber. You did I know it. Well, but you also said they were all the same. <laughs> if, if, well, let's, they both had trouble. <laughs> well, let's remind folks of how new this is. This is the first season that teams have ever been able to adjust rear camber before and during the race with independent, independent rear, suspension. rear suspension. Yeah, it has a lot of adjustment in it. Of course, you know, you still got to go through inspection pre-race and post-race. Pit road is open, but none of the leaders are takers. We still have 26 cars on the lead lap after seven caution flags so far. North of us, the city of Atlanta. From our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, anything can happen as long as you have the drive. Goodyear, more driven. Here's Atlanta Motor Speedway, newly repaved and reconfigured with much steeper 28 degree banking and a narrow racing surface that is producing Daytona and Talladega style action today. Kevin Harvick, your leader, William Byron, Eric Jones, Ross Chastain has just made a pit stop. He's back on the lead lap. And Kyle Busch just completes a lengthy pit stop uh, that has left him eight laps down. Coming to the choose zone for this next restart. When well, that last restart, we saw the leader, William Byron, take the inside lane. That didn't work out so well for him. First time we've seen the leader take the inside. Kevin Harvick going to the outside. And, and to me, it's not as much about the lane, it's who's pushing, right? You just want a, somebody that you feel like is going to give you the best, most aggressive push to get you out there and get clear. It's exactly what happened with Kevin Harvick. That's just if you're up front in that conversation. If you're back here where you're seeing these guys now, now it's the spotter communicating, all right, if this is, is there six on the outside, four on the other, I'm taking the inside with four. You're just trying to gain track positions, all you can do. And we're almost going to have the exact same scenario as we did the last time, Kevin Harvick in the outside lane with um, – uh, Blaney behind him and Eric Jones is going to be pushing the 24 car William Byron. 
You know, every professional sport requires hair trigger decision making and reaction. John Smoltz was in the booth with us, the Hall of Famer. How long do you think it takes a John Smoltz fastball from when it leaves his fingers to when it gets to the batter? Two and a half seconds. Faster. I'm under. A third of a second. What? Two and a half seconds. That's if you throw it. I, I thought it was a lot further. I, I think I could call a game if it was two and a half seconds. And here comes the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Gordon is it. Here he comes. Shows you how much, base, He's how much baseball up. I played. <laughs> two and a half seconds. Best of all, not been so very, very good to you. <laughs> all right. That was Chico Escuela. Here we come. With 160 laps complete. Green flag. Harvick Blaney trying to edge ahead to turn one. Again, have a good combination with Blaney pushing, staying right on him, locked to the bumper. See the side draft right there. Kind of disconnected the 12 from the four. Last time they were both able to clear uh, that inside lane. Now here comes the inside lane climbing their way back. Now double file all the way back. Now at home, if you haven't heard us, and this goes back clear back to Daytona or California, Vegas, and now here at Atlanta, you just, that's the first time I've really heard somebody mention side draft. And this car and the design, the way the airflow works around it, there's just not a lot of air that blows out around this car. It basically eats it, forcing the air underneath of it. Not a lot of side drive. Yeah, it doesn't car. seem to be as powerful and strong, but it's still there. It's still it still there. exists, but you're right. Not not as strong as it was. Chase Elliott steaming around the outside. He's got Chris Buescher with him three wide. Harvick had a huge run. It's important for somebody to go with Chase Elliott right here, which is not going to happen because Ryan Blaney chose that inside or the middle lane. He didn't need the help. He sucked right up to that outside lane. And left Busher and Austin Sendrick behind. The shadows are starting to get long here in Atlanta. They cover turn number two now. Late in yesterday's Xfinity race, it became very hard to see down the front stretch. And we note Brad Keselowski, who was in the booth with Joey Logano and Adam Alexander yesterday, has put a lot of tape on the inside of his windshield to protect against that glare. Those guys learned quite a bit up here in the, the booth on Saturday. Well, they you can, can see take the glare on Sunday. Starting to get bad. You wait another 30, 40 laps here. That conversation, you'll be hearing him on the radio complaining. Glare is super bad listening to that spotter. When this track was originally built, that was turn three, and there was a huge row of pine trees uh, back behind the wall that gave uh, some respite from that late afternoon glare. After a pre-race where they reminded me it was 30 years ago, my first race, I think I remember those pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> they since passed on. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse, Eric Jones trying to get the inside line moving now. They got a little help from Keselowski here. Christopher Bell thought about dropping down from fifth place, thought better of it. When I, I didn't know if he was trying to find some room to make a, a run on somebody or just get some air to the nose by poking that car out there. Starting to see a lot of guys jockeying around behind cars in the wake of those cars. It tells me they're getting tight, needing front air on, on their car to get some downforce on it for turning. Handling issues coming in. Jamie, you got something on us on the 12? Yeah, Ryan Blaney's had a really good handling car all day and yesterday in practice. They were really happy with it, and he started the race on the front row. But they had a problem on the first pit stop earlier, couldn't get it fueled up all the way. He dropped back, but he's been very methodical. He's been patient, even though he wasn't happy. He stayed in the game and back to where he needs to be. The car's really good right now. And again, at the top of the show, we talked about, all right, going back to Daytona, these Fords were extremely strong, and now we have Fords, one, two, three. Two teammates and a Blaney and a 12th for the Penske boys. 
back to looking strong. It just seems like they can not only handle, but they can keep pushing. Uh, you know, I guess it's not one, two, three, sorry, but they're fixing to be. Well, <laughs> That's what I'm we are the second, say. third, fourth, but I, I, I do think that you bring our second, yeah, second, third, fourth, but you do bring up a good point. I think that's what's going to play out here as we get later and later into this race, Clint, is the ability to push cars, not only on those restarts, but late in this race. I think you're going to see that get more and more aggressive. Ooh, Kevin Harvick, that to me looked like a bobble. That didn't look like he wanted to do that right there. So still that car is not exactly as stable and stuck to the racetrack as much as he would like it to be. Let's go back to that inside lane and Brad Keselowski in 11th place, Regan. Well, Mike, interesting enough this morning, Matt McCall, his crew chief, told me that race car just didn't have the speed that they wanted. They've been loose, they've been tight, but couldn't get it as fast as they wanted to be in the in the front today. Well, Brad came on the radio a little while ago and told the team exactly that. He said, I still don't have the speed that I want, but the veteran that he is, he said, I'm going to do everything I can to run a clean race today and get it whatever kind of result we can out of it. But that's smart. I mean, that's what veteran drivers do. That's, you know, you, you find a way, right? You find a way to get yourself in position to win. We've seen Brad be very aggressive on these types of tracks at Daytona and Talladega in the past and find his way to the front that way. Today, he maybe doesn't have the handling in the car, but he's going to have to find a way. And, and you watch, if he's smart, stays out of trouble, he'll be there when it, when it counts at the end. But needs a little bit of momentum with him and his organization. Needs a solid run here. Get that ball rolling again. And I think that communication that you just heard him talking about is down that thought process for sure. This track has hosted NASCAR every season since 1960. That is 116 cup races and never have there been more leaders in one race than we've had today. It's been it's been incredible to watch. I, I knew from practice that we, we were in for quite a show, but I, I think these guys have, uh, have, have have even impressed me more than I, I, I thought what we would what we would see today. It's been a lot of fun. William Byron's Camaro leading three Fords and Christopher Bell's Toyota. That's your fast five after 173 laps. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to the Folds of Honor. Quick trip 500 on Fox, 146 laps to go. William Byron in the lead. We've had a day's worth of excitement. We're not even to the end of stage two yet. Well, we're down about half of our cars, but there's, <laughs> the next half is putting on a heck of a show. You knew it was going to happen. It was only a matter of time with the runs, the block, everything that was happening so fast for all these drivers. I was bragging on Kyle Busch and then the just went away, man. I, I, oh, oh, he's got to spin. Speaking of going away. Woo, he saved it. He made a long awesome pit stop uh, in which they went eight laps down, and here he comes to pit road. Coming to you, sir. Coming to you. They're, they're working a lot on that right rear tire, like maybe it had a bunch of camber or toe knocked into it. I don't want to hear his radio Woo, right that was now. a big, nope. big slide. I think we can tell that story. I don't even want to hear radioactive Tuesday night. <laughs> well, I do want to hear that one. Oh, boy. Yeah, they clean it up pretty well, don't they? And Kyle has taken his car to the garage. Ricky Stenhouse trying to get to Ryan Blaney and move them up front on the low lane. That low lane, it, it's doable, but it seems like to ride in, in the momentum um, you know, on that outside line is just so much powerful down the run. Look at the run the four car has off the bumper of the 10. But what I like here is, is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is able to carry speed into the rear, uh, into the corner, get to the rear bumper of the 12 of Ryan Blaney and give him that push that he needs to potentially get up there to take this lead. It's a big push. Blaney looks exactly like he might, he's going to do. Looked like he might cross to the outside, but no, stays low for the lead. Yeah, that's exactly what happened the lap before that. That outside lane lost a little bit of momentum, but Ricky's car is, is, is solid enough where he can actually get to the rear bumper and stay there going into the corner. And Mike, here's another lead change. And that's the record. Kyle Busch walks out of the garage. Incommunicado. Oh. And here's another change for the lead. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Again, he just carries a lot of speed into the corners. Jumps up in front of Ryan Blaney. This is going to be a show. That's two very aggressive race car drivers for Stenhouse and Blaney leading the pack, leading the charge with this. And don't look now. Look who's on the inside lane. Brad Keselowski. Stenhouse drags the brake just a little bit going off into turn number three. Trying to stay attached to Blaney. And not get too far out front, which would cost him the lead. Right now it's the same. 24 is off him by half. Three car breakaway. First time we've seen that today. You heard Stenhouse, the spotter, giving him that information right now, and it wasn't even about that car behind him. It was about the third place car. That's where that run is generated from. As soon as Blaney in that 12 gets a push from the 24, here he'll come. Be ready for a block. And also manage that lead. Manage that gap with your brakes like you saw him dragging. Do not let yourself get too far out because that's when that run comes so massive that he has forced to make a, a move. Byron to the bottom. Harrison Burton up on the high side, going one lap down. That'll put David Reagan in 26th. Last car on the lead lap. Twenty-two to go in stage two. Suarez to the inside for third. Yeah, he, he had that push from behind. Ooh, so close between him and Christopher Bell. Thought they were going to touch. 
But he had that momentum, Mike. He, he got the run, but he just wasn't able to clear Christopher Bell. And that line backs up all the way to Almirola in sixth. They and definitely you break that momentum, boy. Yeah. It yeah, definitely starts the process time. over again. You have to make sure when you get that momentum, you get that run, that there's a gap in front of that car you're trying to make a pass for. This has to be a spot for you to go. Jamie? Remember, Daniel Suarez had that pit road penalty for pitting outside the box on the last stop. He restarted 18th. Now, on top of that, his cool shirt hasn't been working since the drop of the green flag. He's asked for ice packets when he pits. And look at him rebounding, overcoming those obstacles here in the first half of the race. Suarez side by side for fourth with Kyle Larson. And we're going to take you Fox side by side with 20 laps to go in stage two. Fourteen laps to go in stage two. William Byron going it alone on the bottom side. And this time, that's not going to work. He's starting to back up spots and has no friends. Yeah, they're really lined up on that outside lane. And unless somebody dives in either in front of him or behind him, he's kind of a sit duck there on that inside lane right now. He took it down and it almost was clear of his teammate, the five of Kyle Larson. He was wanting in. It just wasn't enough room. Didn't get the clear up. And man, he pulled the parachute that's going to take him from fourth out of the top 10 back to 12th right now Ricky Stenhouse out in front Regan well Mike new race car this year and some new terms from the spotters take a listen to Tab Boy talking about the boost double wide behind the 20 boost is all equal all equal all equal at half little boost headed at you little boost yeah boost is your way you're good <laughs> Little I, boost coming I like your way. Describing it like that, it, that's just that energy, that bubble that's in between each car. And when one closes up, it creates that boost. And that, look at this big run. That's from the boost that was created behind air, um, the, the the 20 there of Bell. And that's exactly what it feels like inside that car. It's like the turbo, turbo boost. <laughs> turbo boost. 
But everybody yeah. explains that situation a little bit different. You said energy, momentum, however you want to call it. But I dig boost. It's a new one. That was David Reagan going one lap down, running just the super speedway races on the schedule. So that leaves us 25 cars on the lead lap. And now uh, Joey Logano, the first car one lap down in the free pass position. As we're stuck. Jamie Mack. Yeah, guys, I'm just sitting here watching uh, Ryan Blaney, Chris Favell, Kyle Larson. No better time to plan what you might do at the end of the race than as we get close to the end of the stage. Obviously, Stenhouse is going to want to win this, but we saw Denny Hamlin make that move kind of late into turn three earlier in the race. Just curious to see what Blaney's going to do here. And Jamie, that's what I like is that yeah, they, they can make the move, right? I, oh, 47 went around thinking maybe another tire. I'm not sure. Oh, and he gets piled into by Austin Sindrick. And the right rear is down. The right rear is on the wheel. Had a freaking tire go down again. Yeah, that, you can see the 47 Stenhouse thing just snapped around as he got into turn three. We were just talking about the four car having a clean race. Fenners were still on it. Now he's got a lot of damage, Austin Sindrick damage. Leading this group has not been good, especially for those Chevrolets. Well, and I just wonder, are, are you using more, putting more heat into that right rear tire by being up front leading? Well, I think, I, in my opinion, it goes right back to what you started to allude to, Mike, is the collaboration of working together. Oftentimes, you, you learn faster that way, but if something, if somebody's off in that mentality, the least little bit, Chances are everybody else has that same setup in their car. All right, let's see what happens to Stenhouse here. 47. Enters into turn three, boom. You can see exactly the same situation that happened with the aid of Tyler Reddick. The tire goes down. You can see the wheel digging into the racetrack, creating that, that streak. Blaney got through. Uh, Kyle Larson got turned by Christopher Bell. The 20 is... Uh, trying to avoid here. Oh. Or vice versa. And we're going to ride with Daniel Suarez. It's too bad damage there on the floor. Keep the 43, don't let him put you in the middle. Whoa. You're good. Watch him here. Come on to the bottom, 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 bottom. You're good. You're good. You're going to have him. You saw the damage on Kevin Harvick's car. Here's how he got it. Back 48 again. Front of AD, hold your line, hold your line, go hard, He go hard, slowed go down hard. plenty go early. Hard, go hard, go hard. Back. You heard him try to, he, he got on the gas and was thinking he was going to get by them, but he couldn't because the 43 was right in his way. Yeah, they all. He saw him coming up. All the momentum came right back up top. And Austin, Austin Sendrick, a victim. Yeah, just got sent right into Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Eric Jones had woed up for Stenhouse coming up the track and was going to miss him and he got tagged hard by Harvick. Uh, such a One. bummer. Stenhouse for big, big contact. Great camera work there. Just such a bummer for the 47 of Stenhouse doing a great job up front there. And as he was spinning, you saw that right rear tire flat yet once again. So Larry, eight laps to go in this stage. What do we do now? Yeah, I think we're going to see the same thing we saw near the end of stage one. If you're up there up front trying to get those stage points, maybe trying to get that one playoff point for winning the stage, you're going to stay out. But if you're way on back on the lead lap, come get your tires and fuel now. Stay out at the end of stage two. Pit road not yet open, but some of the accident cars coming in and getting repairs. Track sweeper and wreckers out there. One bringing back uh, Austin Sindrick's car. And suddenly the attrition rate has grown much higher. Boy, Ryan Blaney <laughs> really had his work to do to get through there and did. That was a close call. Very, very close. Listen, on, on these style, this style is pack racing. You got to have some luck to go along with a good handling, fast race car.
Seven laps to the end of this stage. This is the seventh caution flag of the day. 17 different leaders. That ties a record. 36 lead changes so far. We saw this uh, shirt last week. And it says, does not listen or follow directions. That, that reminds you, me of somebody I used to work with. Hold on. With you coming in the booth, we thought oh, that we would present you. With oh, the me? How about me? That? Yeah, this oh, that shirt's for your, you. It seems to oh, <laughs> I mean, maybe I, I was mistaken. I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Baby Yoda, okay, but not A lot not of these spotters the up there were thinking the same thing about their drivers, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe it is for me. I, Does not listen yeah, or I, follow directions. I, I, I want to get our producer to be able to, to tell you the truth about who listens and who doesn't up here. <laughs> They're going to open pit road this time. That was wrong, Boyer. Wrong. Probably the first 10 or so will stay out, trying to get stage points here shortly. Uh, three, six, eight. First eight stayed out. Most everybody else comes in. Jamie? Daniel Suarez, remember he slid through his box last stop and he hits his marks perfectly this time. A little bit tight for the 99, really nice recovery. You saw that tear off come off the windshield for clear vision. A four tire stop here, no adjustments. Now these are all cars that were running just at the back of or outside the top 10 that are stopping now. Under caution with six to go in the stage. Kevin Harvick, hard hit here. Welcome back to Atlanta. 119 laps to go as they work to try to get Ricky Stenhouse's car repaired and back out there after bringing out this caution at lap 201. Regan? Mike, some interesting radio on the 45 car of Kurt Busch as he was getting onto pit road into his pit stall.
sink coming into the pit box is awesome. Jamie McMurray, what is it like? And can you see that in the data with that car bouncing so bad? I know he's been complaining all day long about that bouncing. Is there anything you can see there? Yeah, Reg, I mean, just looking at that video footage, you, you can see as he turns the transition, it looks like from the concrete to the asphalt, that car starts bouncing. And obviously, at that point, you're trying to get in your stall as fast as you can. As the front's bouncing, it's going to want to lock those front tires up. So real challenge for Kurt Busch getting into his pit stall. Now watch what happens to Christopher Bell's Jackman, David O'Dell, a 13-year veteran of Joe Gibbs Racing. He gets plonked right here by the right front, keeps his balance, and gets the car in the air, new to this team uh, since last week. Right yeah, didn't in there. <laughs> oh, no. And that's removing equipment, and the 20 will restart in the rear. We're coming green. Blaney's Ford. Kyle Larson Chevrolet on point ahead of Hamlin, Almirola, Elliott, and Briscoe. I'm really surprised with the damage that Kyle Larson has on the front of his car. He didn't choose to go to the outside. We'll see how much that damage costs him in speed. But with a massive push with Chase Briscoe and his teammate Chase Elliott, both chases behind him, doesn't seem to matter right now. You can see the, how draggy his car yeah. is. I think that it's affecting him. I, I mean, heck, the front splitter's practically peeled off of that five car. Two to go in the stage. The racing looks like we're in Daytona. The cars look like we're at Martinsville. <laughs> or the end of Daytona. <laughs> Don't get out too far, Blaney. Whoa! Did Into the wall, Larson the and Hamlin. Uh, it it kind of goes back to what you're saying, though, Clint. There's so Wanna much break, drag in that here. five Wanna car break. pulling him back. I think Denny was just trying to push him. Almost the same situation as his teammate, Kurt, uh, Kyle, Kyle Busch, pushing the three car earlier. Literally the exact same situation. I agree with you. The dragginess of the five had him slowed down even more, creating that big push from the 11 turned him around. AMR safety crew is right there, but uh, looks like Larson wants to drive that thing away. Watch the 11 of Hamlin, the five of Larson. So he gets locked onto him right here. He gets to the right rear, just push it, push collision. it, finally gets down to the left rear. Yeah, he just. Chase Elliott took a shot in it, the right, right door. It, right, and I'm wondering if that will hurt that toe link that we talk about on the right rear because it hit him pretty solid in the right rear. Yeah, maybe he got the door. Hopefully. Yeah. I think he got the door Far of the nine. Hit. I mean, we talk about pushing late in the stages. The one back both lanes, two back both lanes. One more lap at the line here. Wreck him behind you. Just keep coming, keep him below here. Cross it out, cross it out, cross it out. Yeah, we talk about how late in the stages you just can't push at the end of these races. And I think that's more than ever is the 99. Suarez gets through there clean, but I, Clint, I, I know that these guys are going to get aggressive at the end of the stages into this race, but I just, you just can't push in the corners or off the exit of the corners these days. Or, I mean, in, 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 at this track. Watch Kyle Larson's hands through the windshield here. Or... I mean, I feel like the 11 was pushing him in the right spot. He was a little bit more to the right, but then as the car started to get sideways, shifted to the left, and that once you get to that left rear bumper, you're around. So this will end stage two. Ryan Blaney gets his second stage win of the season and the 22nd stage win of his NASCAR Cup Series career.
getting ready for stage number three here on the newly reconfigured Atlanta Motor Speedway. They have truly made this into a super speedway with 28 degree banking narrowness in the turns compared to the old configuration. It's to Ryan Blaney's liking. He is the winner of stage number two. Didn't get any points uh, in stage one, which was won by William Byron. 30 cars still running. 22 on the lead lap. It'll be 23 when we restart. Alex Bowman will get the free pass. And a number of cars with a bit of damage incurred in, oh, any one of the eight cautions so far today. Here they all come, Regan. Oh, Mike Chase, Chase Elliott with that nine race car. Just a little bit too loose with it right now. They've been using camera pictures from the outside of the racetrack to check on the damage on the door of that car from that last wreck. You see him having trouble getting the jack under it right now. And the six car, Brad Keselowski, quiet on the radio in there, still continuing to have a solid, steady, and clean run today, Jamie. Ryan Blaney in the 12, he's a little tight when he was in traffic, but once he had that clean air, that car was good. Hooked up for the 12, and look who's back. Chase Briscoe, last week's winner, had problems early in this race, battled his way all the way to finish third in that stage. His pit stop is complete in the number one box, Mike. Here's the Ram race off pit road. William Byron picks up five spots. Justin Haley, plus seven. Joey Logano, plus eight. Logano had been a lap down, got the free pass one caution to go. Let's dial up your stage. Ryan Blaney, it's Boyer up in the Fox Sports booth. Man, it sure seems hectic out there from, from this glass. I can't imagine what it's like from your windshield. Tell us what it's like. Tell us how you're going to win this race. Yeah, it's definitely hectic. It, um, got the runs you get are, are really, really big. It's hard to defend if you're the leader. And, um, the well, cars aren't handling very great either. You know, it's, uh, everyone's kind of hanging on for dear life. So it's it's very different Atlanta than what we're used to. It's cool to win that stage uh, with our body over Ford Mustang. And hopefully we can just stay in it, stay in the fight, be there at the end. You never know what can happen to this thing. All right, buddy. Thanks for your time. Step forward, thank you. Ryan Blaney, your stage two winner in Atlanta. He won here last year. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR.
one hundred ten laps to go in Atlanta and Denny Hamlin and crew chief Chris Gabehart talked about it on the radio too much damage on the left rear and Hamlin has gone to the garage. She's dog tracking boys really bad and I think a lot of that's coming from the left route but both sides of it messed up man so much promise for the Gibbs boys both him and his teammate Kyle Bush were very very strong running up front where they needed to be fortunately their days are done well one of their teammates Martin Truex will restart on the front row alongside the Chevy of Daniel Suarez Bubba Wallace Ross Chastain row two Greg Biffle in the top five as we get ready to restart, here they come to the Geico Restart Zone. You ready to block the 19? He's on you. 20 push the 23 half off him. Be ready to stay with him here. Stay with him. 23 is going to be on the 19. One off you. That's Frank Kimmel, the spotter for the 99, the leader. Shave whichever lane you want. He's off. 23 is off. The Kyle Larson has taken his car to the garage from damage with the crash with Hamlin. Five cars, single file out front. And I just wonder, are these guys going to pay attention to what we've seen now happen twice off of turn four? Guys locking bumpers, trying to push. Are they going to calm down a little bit here, Clint, to get to the end? Well, you would think. But, I mean, look at the opportunity that's, you know, those crashes create for 23 of Bubba Wallace. You know, you saw uh, Greg Biffle in a 44 car up there. Chastain still in this thing, getting into trouble early, back in the mix of this. Been an up and down day for Toyota drivers. Their top performers, positions two through five, Truex, Wallace, Bell, and Kurt Busch. While Hamlin and Kyle Busch are out of the race. The other thing I see is single file. You know, you <laughs> ask, and, and I think that's exactly what they're doing. All right, guys, let's settle in. Still a long road to hoe to get to the end of this. Need to ride for a little bit. The front eight single file Chris Busher to the inside to make a pass for ninth. The thing that scares me again if, if I'm riding if I'm out here and, and I know that these Chevrolets keep having trouble with a right rear tire I'm looking up there and seeing Swords in that 99 car the only one that hasn't had trouble leading this race. Yeah and, and we know it's come pretty much almost every time from the leader. How could that be a combination of rear camber and clean air? Well, there's just so many new things about this car and the, the, you know, the air that works underneath the car. There could be something to that. be 103 laps to go when they come back. Daniel Suarez out front as we give you a NASCAR on Fox. Rank it up. Behind you. 
Your back clear, quick. Not inside, not inside. They're not together. They're not together. He's inside. You're, you're good. You're good. Protect the top. Martin Truex wants the lead on the inside, and he's got help. Bubba Wallace, Chase Elliott, Joey Logano. You saw the 99 of Suarez. Think about blocking Truex as he made that move into turn three. Thought better of it. Way too early to be putting those big blocks still in the game. And you heard business pick up in his spotters. Uh, you know, his, his pitch. His tone, oh, yeah, oh. exactly. So many times you can tell. Some, you can't see it, but you can tell by the pitch in their voice the magnitude of the situation <laughs> that's behind you. Here's your Xfinity fastest last lap. Lap 226 of this race. Corey LaJoy, quickest. Josh Balicki. Eric Jones, Brad Kozlowski. Tells you the power of that draft. This guy's probably well, that, a little bit further in the field. What, Clint, what'd you call it yesterday? A PR lap? PR lap, <laughs> where, you catch the, where you catch the pack. Uh, well, you feel and that the like fast a, time. at Daytona. Again, if you're a guy like LaJoy riding around, trying to watch all these guys make those mistakes, keeping a gap in between there as they do that there's another five cars out there's another five cars you don't have to do speaking of passing yeah, i mean the fastest last the nine car make that move three wide on the back straightaway yeah chase elliott had an issue on that last pit stop remember the damage as the 11 car or the five car sorry when he was spun hit that right side door of the nine they had some issues getting the jack underneath the right side lost a lot of positions now he's back up front battling for the lead yeah they bent the jack post so the last time by, the fastest lap, uh, Greg Biffle back in 16th and Josh Balicki in 21st because they were catching the pack. Hey, gang, I'm going back to that conversation. I got excited when I saw the nine of Chase Elliott <laughs> make that move go three wide. But so many times when you're riding back there at Daytona, it's so important to keep that gap because if it does wreck, again, that's what you're riding back there to do to try to attrition, get to the end of this race. And when that happens, you get such a massive run, it'll actually hit the chip back there. Oh, yeah. Martin Truex going for the lead has the fastest lap of the entire race. 187.7 miles per hour. Now you see that crowd, the local boys back up front. Strong race car. He's got to find new friends. All of his teammates have had trouble. Guy likes what he sees. Suarez back to the point with a big say, run. He's got a pretty, pretty well, good helper right there behind him and Daniel Suarez. flip side of that conversation. Martin Truex, all of his teammates have had trouble. He's got the Toyota above a Wallace right there behind him. And it's not that Martin Truex Jr. stayed out of trouble. He's been in plenty of trouble, Jamie. Martin Truex Jr., one of those teams that actually gave up the handling of the race car for speed. So they were disappointed when qualifying got rained out this weekend. But James Small told me if they could just get to the front, they thought they'd have a great shot at it today. And so far, car has been decent, just lacking grip earlier like most cars. But he's hanging on to it up at the front. I'm not sure if anybody's had an uneventful day, though. No. <laughs> And then at 22, Joey Logano right back in the mix. We saw him stalled out down there, had uh, mud all over the place, a bunch of Band-Aids on the right side, still digging. But kind of much like the conversation with Kyle Larson, I think if I'm Joey Logano knowing I have that front damage, I'm probably not going to put myself out there in front until the time's right. Need to be pushing. And here's Jamie with Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson hasn't had a chance to see it yet. You and Denny Hamlin, friends, your racers, and then you guys have this incident together. But what happened there, Kyle? Uh, just coming to the end of the stage, and he's just trying to help me uh, get a run down the front, and just got to me in the corner, and I think got me loose. So I uh, hate that that happened, but um, I mean, it's just a, kind of a product of this racing and product of pushing and trying to draft and just get your lane going so I mean I nothing's intentional uh, obviously I, I wish you we were out there both of us racing but um, you know, the good thing is we have a win already you know two DNFs in a row isn't 
what we want, but uh, our hindercars.com Chevy's fast, so you were able to drive to the front a few different times and get a couple different wrecks, so um, I was happy with the, the car. The handling was off early, but we got it better, and I thought the speed was there to, to contend, so um, just move along and, and go have some fun on the road course. Thanks, Kyle. Jeff, you said it, you know, earlier, what was it, 10, 15 laps ago, we're single file, everybody's kind of calmed down, and now, what even happened? with 90 <laughs> laps to go, here they are door to door again, going for it. Somebody this else looks, had a different agenda. Yeah, this looks like a 180 mile per hour pace lap. <laughs> Back to Jamie. Denny Hamlin involved in that same incident. You tried to continue and couldn't, Denny, but sum up what it's been like for you guys today in racing here. Yeah, we had a really fast Felix uh, Camry just um, trying to help Kyle there, and I just uh, needed to let him go off of turn four. Uh, the track gets light there, the car starts to lift up, and that's where I needed to back off of him and uh, just didn't and, and spun him out. But um, yeah, it's a shame. Our car was really fast. Uh, you know, we, we definitely slowed, got slower uh, after the first part of the damage when we were in that first wreck. But uh, overall, it just. You know, frustrating, but I mean, we are we're running well. We're just finishing horrible, and you know, I'm just making some bad decisions. And, and you know, it's easy to, in retrospect, um, to say, ah, oh, well, you, I, I should have done this, and I know I should have done that. But in the moment, in the you know, with, you're trying to battle for some stage points there. You're like, okay, we're, we got good grip. I'm pushing them. Everything's going well, and all of a sudden the car lifts up and he's gone. So it's just something in the split second decision making. You don't don't really come to you. It's been a tough start to the season for the 11 team, Mike. That it has, Jamie. He's still looking for his first top 10 finish of this year, five races in. Daniel Suarez is using what we used to call the chrome horn <laughs> to try to move forward. That front bumper, he's giving it a workout. And he's going to do it right there again. You see the punch, but the accordion effect, you have to be careful as you're hitting those guys. It's so important if uh, for a Christopher Bell spotter to be dead on point with that connection. He's, as soon as the 99 gets to him, you have to tell him that way you don't accordion effect and run over those two cars. Pushing on the straightaways can work. Just I wouldn't be doing it through the you, corners. You can tell by his hands right there. He got super loose getting into the corner, had his hands full with the Christopher Bell in the 20 right on his rear bumper. 86 laps to go as the sun gets down into the glare zone off to the west. We're going to take you Fox side by side.
eighty one laps to go in Atlanta an eventful day and the hometown favorite Chase Elliott out in front of Daniel Suarez Christopher Bell Chase Briscoe and William Byron time for today's credit one bank ones to watch. I'll tell you the one I'm watching is that 99 Daniel Suarez running second right now. I'm telling you he's action track everywhere around him. You got a new configuration. We had a new winner last week and I think you're going to have another new winner again here today in Atlanta. Well Clint I've got my eye on Joy Lagan on that 22 car up at the front from the drop of the green flag involved in the crash at lap 144 when a lap down got the free pass back at lap 200 he's back up inside the top 10 we talked about it in the pre race he loves new racetracks. There's only been one Georgia driver win here at Atlanta awesome Bill from Dawsonville well his son Chase Elliott is up front right now. And I think we're going to get a second Georgia winner. It's been a heck of a sports year for Georgia. Let's go Chase Elliott. I'm keeping my eye on the 20 of Christopher Bell. They've come from mid pack today. They've overcome issues on pit road. Hit is Jackman, who's still in the infield care center, by the way. But they're keeping their focus, keeping it up there in the top five. I'm keeping my eye on the 20. Brian Blaney has been to the Luck Bank several times today. He must be Irish. St. Paddy's Day and all that. No, he's really good on super speedways. Still think he's owed one after that Daytona 500. Maybe today. And that's your Credit One Bank ones to watch. You know how much mail we're going to get that you picked a Hendrick car and it just happened to be the one leading. <laughs> What, what, I'll, I'll admit, Mike, I'm a little biased right now. What, the, <laughs> what does a vice chairman do anyway? <laughs> Run that car. It, 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 Make sure that it, here's what I've learned, Mike. I'm the guy when things don't go well that gets the call. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough. <laughs> things have settled down into an orderly procession, at least through the first dozen or so spots. I mean what a crazy race this has been now still on the lead lap Cody Ware Corey LaJoy BJ McLeod Josh Balicki all still on the lead lap top 20 drivers right now 76 laps to go. There's plenty of guys out there that I would have said they're out of this race a long time ago and man it, it's unbelievable the, the perseverance adversity that a lot of these teams are facing to try to patch these cars up as well as what the drivers are having to do to stay in this thing to get to the end. One lap down we've got David Reagan and Kevin Harvick. Harrison Burton down two, McDowell down three Gilliland five and Reddick seven. Uh, but nine cars out of the race also Jamie. Just an update I had mentioned the 20 Jack man he is out he's being treated right now but has not been released Kyle Bush's Jack man Kellen Mills is going to be at the helm for Jack man so obviously these guys all train together but their timing together as a unit in a race has not happened yet so he'll fill in for the remainder of this race. Thanks Jamie. Chase Briscoe with a little push there on uh, on Bell and we'll watch him. What's the difference between hey come get me come give me a push and get off me. <laughs> He's been moving up every lap. I've been watching him move up to the outside uh, coming off of turn four high and then he swoops down and gets this huge run down the front straighter right to the back bumper of Christopher Bell. That's been going on about every single lap something that he's been working on and something that could get him a win uh, at the end of this thing. Those pushes those runs have to be generated from something and him moving up and making that happen. It's just exactly what he's working on. Yeah he's he's just storing that in the bank for later. You saw see he move up right here. Watch this. He's going to move up and then he'll get this massive run up off the corner and right to the back bumper. He's after actually having to lift right there because of it. And we saw the last time by Christopher Bell putting his hand out the window saying that's enough. Yeah that's enough. Right. Uh oh. Caution debris in turns three and four. It's the ninth caution today. Comes out at lap two fifty four. Ooh. See some damage to the right side there. All right. Like Tyler Reddick. I'm going to call this the Jeff Gordon factor oh. because for the first time this year you know who won Clint's money. Nobody. Correct. 
Well, I ain't the Jeff Gordon factor, and I'm not picking. It's this racetrack. How are you going to pick anything that's going on in here today? Everybody tried to forecast what was going on. I love the action here at Atlanta. So nobody went for six for six on the Fox Bet Super Six app. So Clint's $10,000 is safe this week. If he doesn't spend it, you'll have another chance to win next week. My baby will give you a ride home this week. <laughs> I can afford it. You're going to pay for all of our ride home. So, Larry, 71 laps to go. If you pit now, where are you on fuel? It's right there on the threshold, Mike, but I do <laughs> believe when we've got 22, possibly 23 drivers on the lead lap, you will see them all hit pit road because, again, it almost depends on how much you're wide open throttle. If you're leading, obviously, you're not getting as good a fuel mileage, but I think everybody comes here, packs that thing full of fuel, and see where we go from there. David Reagan. Georgia driver is the free pass car running uh, just the super speedways this year. Next Sunday on Fox, wow, things are bound to get weird down in Austin. Who can outlast the rest of the best on the first road course race of the season and capture the checkered flag? NASCAR from the Circuit of the Americas next Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app and uh, Jeff Gordon is keeping the boot, uh, the seat warm for Tony Stewart next week. Oh, hey, Tony did a great job in Daytona, so enjoyed listening to him. And he, I think he's a pretty good road racer, too, to have. In he the, is, but that's <laughs> a cool racetrack and a cool venue, and I can't wait to get down there. Regan? You see Chase Elliott on the top of the screen, or on the right of the left of the screen there. He's going to get four tires of fuel. A little concern over that jack if they could get it under there still. Looks like it's so far so good. Quiet on the radio for Chase. They're going to get every drop of fuel in it that they can for this last run. Jamie? Christopher Bell, really nice run there. The last uh, stint running in the top five. There's that jack man, Kellen Mills, trying to jack the right side of the car. Obviously wearing a different uniform. This pit stop, the 99. Daniel Suarez, right side tires only a little bit tight for him. 14 of Chase Briscoe, pretty good. Good stop for him as he pulls out of his number one box. Yeah, Suarez had to wait for the call to leave because they were trying to pack that car full of fuel. Look at the two tire stops and the big gains coming off pit road. Well, this may change everything here. Caution flag with 70 laps to go in Atlanta.
Welcome back to the Folds of Honor. Quick Trip 500 on Fox. 68 laps to go. Eric Almarola is your race leader. That is a tilt-a-whirl. You see them at the carnivals all over the place. You kind of look like you're skydiving there. But basically, you're just spinning around, and it leads us to the case of the leading but spinning Chevrolets today. Right rear tires have been the name of the game. There's one right there, the first one with Ross Chastain, and then Tyler Reddick. Right rear goes down again, causing a massive pileup. You can see him stacking up, and here's the third one. Again, at the start of the field, it's something about that leading the pack. Right rear tires going down, creating melee for everybody behind him. Eric Almarola is now out front after a quick pit stop, but what about fuel? Can they go the distance? But are we in a bad spot here? if we lead so you as the leader we're right on our number so um do all you can for us right here you just go hard then we'll worry about it copy i assume we're not going to go 66 street flag laps to the end either well that would be the smart money wouldn't it i think you want to pad that yeah. fuel tank just a little bit <laughs> you don't want to be right on the number Drew Blickenster for the crew chief for Almarola there. Those guys always try to, you know, factor in some green white checkers if that comes. It's very possible it could. Whoa, we've got a development. Yeah, I was gonna say. What I has mean, happened here, Tony? I was a so, scooter accident. I, I was so <laughs> I was so focused <laughs> on how sharply dressed he was today, being the executive down there, but then uh yellow injury. <laughs> Looks okay so far on that. The left side tires that he was looking at right there don't seem to be an issue whatsoever. You've seen guys get away with two tire stops and things like that. Would certainly be with 60 laps to go, be nervous about those right rears again. Well, and it's not unusual, right? A newly paved racetrack, it's always a concern that you're going to put a lot of heat into those tires and, and have some issues. It's just odd to me to, that's coming on the right rears. Only uh, like a right front. Definitely, but I still think, I don't think that's chasing it on a Goodyear's perspective. I think these these teams may be getting a little bit greedy with their cambers mm -hmm. and getting that inside shoulder hot like you're saying. We're gonna listen to Drew Herring, Martin Truex's spotter on the restart for car number 19, third row inside. Eric Almarola has become this race's 19th different leader. That is a record for Atlanta. William Byron alongside Bubba Wallace, Ryan Blaney, row two, Eric Jones, Martin Truex, row three, then Briscoe, Suarez, Elliott, and Bowman, the top ten as we go back to green. Rolling clean out from here. Tight out from pushing, both lanes pushing. Half back for your lane here. Still tight out front here. Outside full, 14 pushing as well here. Separated barely. Go back to your bumper. Tight out front still. Top lane still full here. See that outside lane, how well formed up it is. Guys aggressive, Bubba Wallace aggressive to the rear bumper of our leader, Eric Amarola. Even behind him, those guys, you can see that. You always know what's aggressive of uh, uh, bump drafting when you start to see the hood flaps flopping around. That shows you how tightly packed up they are to the rear bumper of the car in front of them. Looks like pace laps at 180 miles an hour plus. And just trying to figure out if I'm inside one of those cars, you know, especially back third row, fourth row back, which one of these lines can I make the best, uh, you know, moves in? Um, most of the race, it seems like that outside line's been pretty good and, and where I would want to be. But again, it's all about the company within those lines. Chevy leading two Fords. Byron in front of Almarola on the outside, Blaney on the inside. Here comes the Toyota. A Bubba Wallace with a push. Sixteen cars with a gap. Back to the second group. 
Here comes a move. Yeah, I saw I was wondering if Eric Emerald was going to be content in that second spot. Well, guess what? Bubba Wallace behind him in third was not. Bubba made that nice drop down move and then detached the lead duo from the two wide pack. Now they've caught back to him. Two back to two wide, both lanes helped off by one. So tight in front of that 23. So two back to two wide. All right, let's listen to Freddie Kraft, Bubba Wallace's spotter. Half lane up to the 12th. One back to the 12, backing up for a run. Protect right rear, protect right rear. Half back top, don't let him up top. In line with you. Two back to the 19 on the bottom. So two back bottom. Half back 12, trying for a run here, keeping your rear. Watch right rear again. Up, half lane up. So half up, in line. That's solid communication. Yeah. It's so important about those runs. You know, we talked about Chase Briscoe in that 14 earlier, how he was moving up in three. I saw Blaney and his mirror doing that exact same thing. And, and to me, and you spoke about this earlier, Clint, it's not a, a spotter's job is not about the car right behind you. You have your mirrors that you get a pretty good idea of what's happening right behind you. You need the information that's two, three, four rows back or, or cars lined up behind you because all that that, that, that that starts to come together is what's going to lead to how much of a run they get on you. And on the flip side of that conversation, exactly on the front side of that too. You know, you can see obviously the car in front of you, but you can't see what's going on in front of him or even in front of him for that accordion effect. So those guys are busy up there on top of this roof today. Out the eighth car back on the outside, that 48 of Alex Bowman, who's overcome a penalty, got himself back on the lead lap, and Jamie, he's in the top dozen. He is right now, but bad news. He just came on the radio and said he has a vibration. Greg Ives, his crew chief, said we're pretty confident. We got him all tight, all four lugs, that is. It could be a wheel weight, so they're keeping their eye on him. Riding along with Kurt Busch right here. You heard him jump out of the gas real quick. That inside line, a quarry and just like we were talking about, heads up move, build out of the gas a little bit. What I see out of Kurt, he's pretty content just riding about a car or two length, uh, you know, off the car in front of him, trying to get to the end of this thing. 57 laps to go, still a lot of racing. Not a lot of company down there, only five cars in that inside lane in this lead pack. I will tell you one thing, and again, takes me back to Daytona Talladega. If I was riding like we were talking about it, Kurt, Kurt Busch, is, is, it gives you an option, an out. It, you can get to the bottom. Look at this three wide. Yeah, it looked to me like, I don't know if Truex's car just a little bit unstable right there, but also you had aggressiveness from the 14 of Chase Briscoe behind him and actually went to the middle and made, that's the first I've seen anybody try that and make it work. Truex is going to fall to 13th right here. So he drifted up like he got tight getting into the corner. Chase was able to get right to his rear bumper. Yeah, both chases, it, it helped Chase Briscoe a lot that Chase Elliott came with him. Larry, you said we were right on the number for fuel. How much more gas is William Byron burning than the cars that are in his draft? Well, I'm watching several of those cars up front, and like Ryan Blaney in that 12 car who's running third, he's 70, 75% throttle all the way around the racetrack, never wide open. But yeah, when you're up there leading like William Byron, you're pretty much bending the floorboard. <laughs> this is another big if, but if this thing was to run to the end of this thing, these guys, the, the fuel that they run, we haven't had a fuel mileage race yet. Nobody no. really knows how far they can stretch this thing, and that's exactly why you see in the bottom of this, Ryan Blaney, he's holding three-quarter throttle, saving some fuel to the end of this thing. Well, and I gotta believe Rudy Fugel, crew chief for William Byron, he's giving him that information. He knows he's using more fuel. He knows what his fuel number is, and he's either banking on they got enough to go all the way, or they're expecting a caution to come yeah. out. 
Well, I mean, I, again, that's a big if, but it, I, it just takes me to the fact that we I've actually heard a lot of these teams concerned about maybe not being able to get all the fuel out of these things when it gets down to it. The old days, we'd flip over to the fuel pump too, get the last remaining bit, it'd give you about a lap and a half. We haven't really encountered that issue with these cars yet. Still a lot of unknowns. Well, that's true. Uh, Eric Jones has had quite a day, was involved in a crash early uh, back at the, let's see, the end of the first stage. And at lap 201 was involved in that one that took Ricky Stenhouse out of the race. Look at this glare. Collision on pit road with Eric Almarola. And now here's Jones in the top five. And, and you know, prior to that incident, he was up front. I mean, he's been up front in the top five a lot up until he had that damage. Now he's finding his way back up there. Had a great run in California. And on pace for a top five or at least a top 10 here. William Byron is, oh, you look at the glare off into turn one. Byron working on 14 straight laps led. Now all the Chevrolets that have had problem with the right rear, none of them were Hendrick cars. Is, I wonder with Camber, is there a different approach to some of these other Chevrolet teams that have had issues than, than to what well, you know, they're Cam doing? Camber's like free speed, right? It, it just makes the handling of the car a little bit better. If you're looking for a little more front grip, a little more Camber can, can sometimes play. Sometimes it's with air pressure. And because we have the ability with an independent rear suspension, you can play around a little bit more with, with Camber than you have in the past. The question is, what's conservative and what's aggressive? Yeah. And so we heard from Alan Gustafson, the crew chief for Chase Elliott, they felt like they're a little more conservative maybe the other Hendrick cars have been too we we don't know because we just haven't gone that far with the Hendrick car in the lead yeah Greg Stucker with Goodyear longtime engineer he went to the media center and he said right now we really don't have any answers but he, he said a common theme is one manufacturer and the right rear tire we're not seeing any tire wear whatsoever we did see overloaded and over deflected we heard it with a radio communication with Alan Gustafson. He said it. He knew, you know, that thinking those guys were a little bit more aggressive on their cambers, and it bit them. A racer? Greedy? No way. <laughs> William Byron leading with 48 laps to go in Atlanta. We'll take your Fox side by side.
Richard Petty laps to go here in Atlanta as you watch our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear for those that push the limits of possibility Goodyear more driven. William Byron has been out front in one stretch as long as anybody has today. Bubba Wallace right in his draft. Ryan Blaney Chevy Toyota Ford in the top three spots. Besides all the melee and action that we've seen throughout this day I think right now they're actually content because they want to save a little bit of fuel. Now Alex Bowman as they came up on a lapped car uh, of Harrison Burton the 21 the 48 doesn't fare too well here. Well, the 14, uh, 14 came up the racetrack a little bit or a lot. Well and, and Clint and I were talking it looks like the 14 is really tight he gets in the core can't hold it on the bottom and I think that's what happened right there and, and when they got even closer together it almost pulled the 14 up even further. Yeah 14 definitely ran him up. You see him doing it right there just having trouble holding it down. Again, that tight radius, the circumference around this track versus a Daytona. We've talked about it earlier in the race. It's hard to keep that thing down all by yourself. So of our top 10 drivers, no driver in double digits for career wins in the top 10 of this race. <laughs> All right, the chatter on the radio has begun to turn to fuel. Here's Bubba Wallace and company. Tell him keep saving for it just like he is, but keep saving, keep behind him. Tell him to try to stay below 90%. I know he's got a lot to deal with. Trying to stay below 90%. Come on. How does he know 90%? It's on the dash. You can actually have your throttle percentages on there. It's a page that you can switch to and know exactly what the percentage you are. But you can see it right there on the bottom of your screen. Three quarters. Last I checked, that's about 75 percent, right? Yeah, I was going to say uh, <laughs> that that's making Rudy Fugel a little nervous. You saw a little bit of a, of a blip there on William Byron as he lifted going in the corner. But I mean, look, look, look how much Bubba's saving. What I what I'd be doing, I'm pretty sure they are doing this. They're telling him how much Bubba Wallace is saving. And, and he doesn't want to pass him right now. Nobody really wants to pass him because they don't want to be in the lead. So if you're William Byron, you could actually taper it back and probably still maintain the lead. You're saying you don't want to be leading this race at the end? <laughs> I never said that. I think you I want to be, be right. leading right now. I just want to back off the throttle and save some fuel. I think the question is, more importantly, when do you make your move? If you're if Bubba Wallace or a Blaney, you know, everybody, if you're Blaney, uh, the 10 car of Eric Amarola, what are you waiting on? That move uh, of, of Bubba Wallace, what does that do? That creates a pocket, a window of opportunity to either go with him, put him three wide, do something. You're waiting for that guy to make a move. But in the don't other you race. just wish it was that easy, right? Oh, you're yeah. Bubba Wallace, you're in second, you go, I'm going to make my move going into three in the last lap. Well, that's not what the guy in fifth and He's sixth make and further you. back is going to do. Is it up to Bubba Wallace? Or to make that move, does he have to back up to Ryan Blaney and get Blaney to go with him? Well, yeah, I mean, and then Ryan's going to back up to the 10 of right. Amarola and make the move on Bubba. Or will they form a line on the inside and force your hand to move down and, and block? I mean, yeah, there's just, again, so many unknowns on how this is going to unfold at the end. But I can promise you it's going to pick up and be exciting. Blaney's on board on the right, looking back at Eric Almarola. Just a little kiss. Clint, you said at the top of the day and yesterday during practice, Brad Kozlowski is going to have a good day. And he struggled in the early going. But here's Brad right in the middle of this pack in 10th place. And that's in contention here. But it also takes me back to that radio chatter that we heard with him and his team earlier than this race talking about we're going to get a good run. We need a solid run and we need to finish reestablish ourselves with some momentum, some confidence back with our race team. Solid run here today. We'll do all of those things for Brad Keselowski and all of his teammates. Jamie Mack. Well, guys, we're entering uh, about 35 laps since we went green the last time, and we've averaged 38 laps for the guys that, had, that have had issues with the right retire, whether it's tire pressure related or, or camber related. So 
If I'm one, if I'm one of those Chevy teams, William Byron leading this race, the leader's been the guy that's had that issue. Um, I would be hoping for a, for a caution right about now, so I can come in, get some <laughs> new tires, and and regroup. Michael McDowell makes an unscheduled pit stop as we stay green here with 32 laps to go. Whoa! Oh, that's Kevin Harvick. Yikes. And what he had to do, he moved down on the front straightaway, but had to merge into traffic in the corner, nowhere to go. And it was right in the lap of what you saw with Logano. Yeah, that's that narrow area. We talk about getting into turn one. The funnel got him. <laughs> he didn't want to be there. He was forced to be there. Harrison Burton goes another lap down. And uh, back to Brad Keselowski and Regan. Well, Mike, you talk about him hanging around in the backside of the top 10. That's the good news that he's in a good position right now. The better news is, is he is one of the cars in my section of pit road that can make it the distance. They opted to come down and top that race car off during the last caution. No worries for fuel on them. Spotter TJ Major's been telling Brad, there's a number of cars in front of you we don't think can make it. That is likely the case. Uh, let's see. And that caution flag pit stop we saw Daniel Suarez stop and wait uh, for the second can of gas to make sure they were packed full we know Suarez can make it I mean based on what I saw with Bubba Wallace running about 75 percent throttle I, I I think a lot of these guys are saving enough I, I the only one I'd be worried about is the leader right now yeah well, you can always tell when crew chief's starting to, to get in your ear, all right, you order the spotters here, tell him save a little bit more, a little bit more. That tells you they're getting nervous on top of that box as well. Let's look at the telemetry on William Byron and see if he's able to do those baby lifts uh, that he was asked for going into the corner, trying to save a little gas. Hey, you saw him in the corner doing so and trying to manage that gap and doing the best he can there. Starting to yeah, look at 80 percent, but see yeah, in the corner, now he's doing it in the corner because he's stacking them up. It doesn't matter. He'll get to push on the straightaway and they'll push him back out and he'll be able to lift when he can. And I really think they're telling him, hey, they're not going to pass you. Not yet, right? We're not there yet. We, we got to get probably inside maybe 15, 20 to go before anybody starts really making any aggressive moves. But I like how he's doing that in the corner. And because of that, here comes that inside line. Yeah, and, and I think these guys, Mike, sorry, I think a lot of these guys have been saving. They've been saving, riding in line until somebody says it's time to go. The Chase and Chase show hooked up there. Elliot and Briscoe with Corey LaJoy and Joey Legato trying to make something happen on the inside. Problem is I think it's going to take a little bit more than that. You know, so that inside lane's going to have to form up with a few more cars. Top five cars only took two tires on that last stop. Throttle traces on some of the lead cars here. Well, it showed you where they were lifting and a lot more further around the corner, around the whole racetrack, whereas the 24 can only afford to do it in the corners leading this race. Well, and remember, these, these teams on pit road all have the ability to see the telemetry of every driver on pit road. They know exactly who's saving how much and can relay that information. Ooh, man, pretty hairy times Whoa. getting through some slower cars. Benefactor of that was that bottom line. How about Chastain? Ross Chastain. That's exactly what was I was going to say. Big That's time what move. Chase Elliott was wanting to see. A few more cars in that inside lane popped down there. Oh, one in the wall. And around goes Todd Gilliland. Oh, 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 oh Cody wow. Ware. Big a hit. vicious hit to the inside wall with the left front. Caution is out with 25 laps to go. Tenth caution of the day. I mean, they, at they, lap 301. Safer barrier certainly did its job, but and you could see him moving around there. But I guarantee you that one knocked it's the wind bad. out of him. Yeah, it's done. That was Cody on the radio. Definitely seen moving around in the car, which is good. That was a shot. Right front, obviously down Gilliland's car here. Jeff, that reminded me when you hit the inside wall. Which one? I know. <laughs> that was, I've like hit on the inside wall here like before, that. too. That's, it was here. I remember. Oh, yeah. All right, watch the 38 of Todd Gilliland. 
So I think he has a problem trying to get up out of line. Yeah, yeah that thing saw him get out of the gas. It was a tire down. And then how did? Oh, okay. Cody had a little bit of help. Yep. Was that Biffle maybe behind him? Yeah, he definitely got turned. You can see the flame coming out of his pipes. He's up there all by himself. Starts to come around. Yeah, Piffle got yeah, into the and, back of where somebody checked up in front of Cody. Just nowhere to go for those guys. Man. That is a vicious hit. And uh, glad Cody Ware was quickly on the radio and okay. So things pack up here behind Todd Gillel and that yellow car scoots through, but there was just nowhere for Cody Ware to go. He got turned hard. Here's right the tire shredded. I think it wasn't a right rear this time. 27 cars involved in crashes today. We will now have 11 or 12 cars out with an accident as the cause, and that will set a new record for Atlanta Motor Speedway, breaking a record that has stood for 60 years. So Larry, with these caution laps, maybe everybody can make it to the finish, but what would you like to do here? Yeah, Mike, we've got 22 drivers on the lead lap. We're gonna go back racing with less than 20 laps to go. Remember what I said at the top of the show, you have to do everything you can to keep your driver up front, keep that track position. I do think most of those up front, right at the front, I think they'll stay out and keep that track position. I think to your point, this buys us the fuel we need. Now, if you're on back there like Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, maybe even Mark Trex Jr., well outside the top 10, come on, get fuel, make adjustments, maybe put some tires on it. 23 to go now. And they listen to you, Professor. After I saw Larry Mack with that bow tie this morning, that's that's Professor McReynolds. Certainly is. <laughs> There's Brad Kozlowski into his box. Alex Bowman, the first of those down pit road. So a lot of these cars will get four tires and a tank of fuel. Drivers really having a good day here include B.J. McLeod in 13th under this caution. Uh, David Reagan, part-timer in 17th. Josh Balicki in 18th. Greg Biffle, another part-timer in 19th, all on the lead lap. Well, if we showed you all the highlights, we'd be here till midnight, but we do have a few beginning with Noah, Noah Gregson at lap 25. Gregson gets loose, turns to catch it, and the wall is the result. While leading, Ross Chastain cuts down a right rear tire. He goes into the wall, but continues. He's still on the lead lap. Kyle Busch gets into the back of Austin Dillon here, turns him both into the wall. Both Dillon brothers out of the race in that one. William Byron wins stage one. Tire failure for the number eight of Reddick. Everybody spins. <laughs> How is that LaJoy car still running? All right, Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson both out of the race in this crash. Ryan Blaney wins stage two. So now two caution flags later, William Byron in the lead, Jamie. And his crew chief, Rudy Fugel, on the box. He's doing a great job today, led the most laps, still the leader. But the decision now, Rudy, what lane choice here to defend? Yeah, it, it's all about the push. Honestly, I think either lane can work. You know, it, all day long, either lane's worked. For us, the bottom, it takes a lap or two, but we get it going and, and seems to help. So William's done a great job of this Liberty University car, and um, just hope we can we can get a good restart and, and go uh, finish where we've run all day. All right, we're good on fuel at this point, right? Yeah, just uh, see what happens. Uh, excited to see, see how it goes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mike? Byron's led 93 laps. The most laps he has ever led in a cup race was 102 at Miami 
in his last cup victory. To me right here the decision is is where's Blaney going because I, I think you got Blaney and Almirola both of those guys are good pushers but Blaney has, has been a little bit more aggressive I think he's pushed more cars out to the front and had a little bit more experience of that throughout the day so far so now you just got to guess if you're William Byron you have to choose here is which lane is Ryan Blaney going to going to pick behind you. Blaney has a score to settle with super speedways. When we were at Daytona, he was a thousand feet and one nudge into the wall away from a possible Daytona 500 victory. He's been knocking on the door every week. He's been right there knocking on the door. One of the fastest cars of the season, in my opinion. Oh, Blaney went to the outside. Byron going to the inside was the biggest decision well, that, that caught me off guard to be honest with you. Yeah you know earlier when he was uh, leading he chose the inside didn't work out for him but again I really think it's about how good of a push you get from behind. So you think that he chose that that inside line choice was was driven off of having the 10 push in him rather than well I, I think he thought the 12 I mean I don't know what kind of communication was going on with the spotters but I think he was he was thinking the 12 was going to go the inside the but he didn't with him. So here's your top 10. We'll have 23 lead lap cars. Kevin Harvick gets the free pass. David Reagan had a safety violation on his pit stop. Well, I can and they'll you. be driving off into the sun when they take the green. They sure will. Thank gosh uh, for these guys in front, William Byron, Bubba Wallace. All the action is going to be in their rear view mirror, not out the windshield, because they can't see out of that thing anyway. This is where we saw it yesterday in an Xfinity race, though. You have to. Now let's start talking about this double white line on the bottom. You cannot advance your position or push somebody below that trying to advance their position. Protect that bottom line if you're William Byron. If you see that 10 car getting a run, you better not leave that door open. Well, and now we're inside 20 to go. The, the pushes are going to get incredibly aggressive, so it's going to get intense. Green flag. Ross Chastain might play a big role here. He's very aggressive with that push. Sure is. All three of those cars had inside lines together, format, formulated way better than the outside. You see the 43 coming to the 12. Will that be a difference? William Bryan back to the lead. Yeah, I thought Blaney did a nice job pushing Bubba, but it was that push from Ross Chastain. Oh, he turns it in. Caution. Oh, bummer for Eric Almirola. He's doing a great job there. We, and you, you know, called we talked, that, Jeff. Well, we just, we, you know it's going to get more intense, and the pushing's going to get more aggressive. And those decisions are going to get okay. tougher for William uh, Byron, maybe need to Bubba Wallace, in. Blaney, all these guys have to make sure that they're in the right line with the right push. So watch the 99, the 1, and the 10 on the inside from our aerial coverage. One is just pushing hard. Yeah. Get him. 99 really wasn't wasn't there, but the one was just aggressively pushing and you know, it could be too. these these tires have, have they've got the air pressure built up. They've, they've got quite a few laps on them. So the cars probably not quite as stable as they were. And then that aggressive pushing, you can see that hood flap. But it isn't any more aggressive. Look on the outside line. The 12 had Bubba Wallace jacked up as well and had him sideways a little bit. I mean, it's just time. It's time to push and go for it. If you're going to if you're going to go for it and put yourself in a vulnerable spot, I've always said I'm going to do it at the end of the race when the pay windows <laughs> open. Right. I do not want to wreck with 20 laps into the race. I'll do it with 20 to go. One of the things I noticed, Mike, is right there that's where that first dog leg is at so it's not like it's a straightaway you actually are turning the wheel a little bit right there so it seemed to me like eric was turning the wheel to make that first dog leg and then he had that push from the one you're right jeff you could see the yaw in the car beat just before uh, the one got to him this is a quad oval there's a short straightaway between the double dog leg here uh, on either side not a tri oval like daytona but a quad oval and that's uh that's what produces that. There's a there's a look at it. 
And there is the area Jeff is talking about. It doesn't look like much there, but I promise you, 190 miles per hour when there are cars all around you, it's more, and the guy pushing you, it's a, it's a lot more of a turn than you would imagine. So the first 10 cars have tires that are 48 laps older than Truex, Logano, and on back. As we get ready for this next restart, William Byron's had a chance to see what that lane would do. What's he do now? Well, I mean, that one worked out pretty good for him. Again, I go back to Ryan Blaney in third position. Is he going to stick with Bubba Wallace, or is he possibly going to go with the 24 of William Byron? Whatever lane William Byron chooses. It takes, hey, man, you got competition this week for Victor <laughs> the Lane. Big photo. boss, the yeah. big H is here. I will say this, though. It takes me back to the 43 of Eric Jones. He's got some damage on the front of that car. Go back to that last restart. He wasn't able to be that third car like you saw on the inside line, which, by the way, was the benefactor of the 24 assuming the lead again. He was off of them, and I think it's a large part of that damage you see on the front of his car. If I'm William Byron, I may not want after, again, going back and having your spotter, having your crew chief, knowing that that, that was a thing in the last uh, restart. I don't know if I want him behind me. Well, let's go back to the last restart and have another look at it here. Talking to the third car back here with Eric Jones. And I, again, it's just, it's not his problem. It, it's got damage on the car. Watch, he gets to them. And then those two cars drive off from him while the inside three are locked tight. Right about here. Yeah, you see that to get gap. Separation. And that's what I was talking about. I would be a little bit nervous. I want that one car, somebody like that, on my bumper. All right. Well, let's say you're Ryan Blaney and you're in third place. Obviously, you can't control where Eric Jones is going to line up behind you. But do you want to be behind William Byron or Bubba Wallace? Well, and that, that you bring up a really good point, Mike. That might be playing into Ryan Blaney's decision here is does he think that William Byron's car is stronger or Bubba Wallace's car is stronger? Well, but my thought process in that where my head was at was where what line do you want to be on? I think he chose the right line with the right company to help him get there on the, that last restart. But with this one, if they if you have the 43 behind you do, in fact, that's what you think you're going to have. Do you want to be on the outside coming off of two or the inside? Well, based on what I saw there, I, I want the lane Maybe has Ch uh, Ross Chastain because yeah. <laughs> he was the guy that was able Maybe to stay connected to, to all of them. Decisions, decisions. I love this choose rule. It just creates a whole new element of strategy on every restart. And they don't use it at Daytona and Talladega. Uh, but here, despite us having the super speedway package, the high banking, the drafting, uh, they decided to employ it here, and I'm all for it. Well, don't tell them that. We need to keep it. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they might need to incorporate it into Talladega and Daytona. Man, what suspense. What a racetrack. It's right. always been a cool racetrack. I think they made it better. Here they come to the choose. No choose. Your choice. Do not hit the box. <laughs> Where is it? I can't see it. He's going inside. There Lane, he's going outside. Well, I know. I'm talking with the glare, Mike. And oh. Chastain <laughs> went outside. We heard of those guys having trouble yesterday. Literally couldn't see the arrow because of the glare. Let's take a little flashback here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, there it is. That's the scenario we we're talking about. Sorry, go ahead. 1960, this was built as a conventional mile and a half oval and Fireball Roberts. Captured the first checkered flag here over Cotton Owens. That's Bill Elliott on the bulldozer reconfiguring the track into the quad oval that we've known since 1997. Bobby Labonte, the first winner. They got everything, they got their money's worth out of this asphalt and they finally tore it up, reconfigured the track with a 28 degree banking to make this America's first mile and a half super speedway where the racing has been like Daytona and Talladega. And now with 14 laps to go, William Byron and Bubba Wallace square off on the front row. Ryan Blaney and Eric Jones with that damaged nose in row two. 
Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, teammates in row three. Well, it's the exact scenario we were talking about. He's got the 43 behind him, but I like who's behind him. Daniel Suarez has been fast all day long. I think he can push the 43 into the 24. We shall see. Rest of the top 10. Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell, Chase Briscoe, and Chris Busher. Here we go. Well, Blaney's didn't get connected to the 23 there. Nice push, but from Eric Jones. Now they're getting organized in that outside lane. But almost exact opposite of that on the bottom. The 99's not to the 43. Yeah, this is going to give Bubba the lead, I believe. Momentum is on the outside. Boy, the 43 is right with William Byron, though. And there they detach. Both lanes got detached. I think the one pushing the 12 is going to push this 23 Bubba Wallace to the lead. Boom. There it is. And if he doesn't, Blaney will. <laughs> 12 to go. Chaos and competition this day has had it all. And we're not done. Boy, just no help on the inside for William Byron. All the help out there on the outside with Bubba, Ryan Blaney, Ross Chastain. Here comes Chase Elliott into the picture. Chastain's wanting to get down. And Bubba, I think Bubba's going to try to block both lines and just manage that lead, utilizing both lines. But I don't think you're going to have that opportunity. Big push coming here to that inside lane. Yeah, Bubba's doing a great Whoa. job here controlling these lanes. Byron into Blaney there, contact. I think the one of Ross Chastain is giving oh. the 12th car huge shots. Watch this momentum on the outside. So tough when you're Bubba Wallace. Oh, here comes a big push to the 24 and the inside lane. That might get him clear. Sure does. I was going to say, so tough for Bubba Wallace to try to figure out which lane to block at the right time. But here comes a big run from Bubba Wallace. Woo! Well, Ty surprised. didn't get it, didn't go low. Little surprise he didn't go for it. There's still time, though. If I can manage that second spot, I think we've seen enough. You can get that slingshot to the bottom if you, in fact, can get to that last lap and make a quick move. Yeah, I agree with you, Clint. I definitely want to be in second position on that last lap if I could get myself into that situation. They're going to drop Daniel Suarez from this group up front. If you're William Byron, I mean, you are a sitting duck. You're going to be forced to make a massive block, and we've all seen time and time again what those blocks do. I think the key for William right now is he's going to have to ride the brakes a little bit, keep that gap to an absolute minimum. And I think that's exactly what you saw him do right there. 46 lead changes, an all-time Atlanta Motor Speedway record. <laughs> Man, going to be so hard to keep those guys behind you. He's going to have to be three lane Wayne to hold <laughs> on to this. If I'm if I'm Wallace and Blaney, I, this is exactly the scenario that I want. Everybody's single foul, no runs coming, nobody's advancing on that bottom. I want to wait, set up my run, and time it just right for that last lap pass. Yeah, except for Blaney wants to win the race. He doesn't want to push Bubba yeah, to but, the win. But it's an opportunity. If Bubba goes sideways and or to the bottom and those cars get side by side, Chase Elliott ain't having none of it. He's not going to wait. He's going to make the move. It's going to force those guys' hand. And who's going to move down in front to block him? Well, Chase knows he needs to be in those top two or three cars if he's going to have a shot at winning this race. 18 cars in that lead draft back to Josh Balicki. Eric that, Jones got shuffled, so did Daniel Suarez. When that 23 makes his move, if in fact it comes to then, if he makes his move, both cars sitting side by side will get stalled out, enabling the 12, the 1, the 9 to have massive runs on them coming to the line. Saw it last night in the Xfinity race. But does it have to be the last lap? I yes, think, but I don't think Chase Hill is going to give you that option. He's going for it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just think the runs are too big, Mike, for you to, to do it any sooner than the last lap. I think some guys are going to try before that, but I, I just don't think it's going to stick. Man, Chase is really falling back. 
taking that chance. He just didn't quite have as big of a runner. He had to check up a little bit as he tried to make that move and stalled him out. Bubba Wallace's last two super speedway races, he has finished no worse than second. When does he back up to Ryan Blaney and make a run? At the exact same time, William Byron, that 24 spotter, telling him he's backing up, back up, back up, man, that gap. When I think they're telling Bubba Wallace, the 12 of Ryan Blaney's backing up, backing up. Christopher Bell on the bottom, couldn't quite squeeze in there. Two back and to the top. That is Bubba's spotter. Look at him stacking up on that outside lane. You're also seeing some of the side drafting get more aggressive as well. And it's actually working with Christopher Bell. Somebody going to move down and try to utilize his push. I think it's right here going into turn three. Big run coming. Here it comes. There it is. Oh, Lost Ross that Chastain. Chastain. Went for it. That might have been William Byron's best friend. And that sends Blaney backwards as Chastain. Comes up to third. He's oh, going here we go. Second. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One this Bank. Exactly he wants what William side Byron side. wants. Side by side behind him. Oh, oh. Bubba Wallace and Blaney. Blaney into the wall There's, with Frisco. Here comes no a problem. run. The one of Ross Chastain. You're going to have to block. Oh, below the white line there by Christopher Bell. They're racing side by side. Perfect scenario for William Byron. There's going to be a massive run coming off this one car. Four. Byron top to bottom. Hugs that white line, drifts up and comes to the line. He oh. wins it as Busher, Haley have a hard crash into the wall. I believe that's Harrison Burton with them. At least three cars involved. Couple of big hits. Oh my Whoa. goodness. Whew. Now I can take a breath. What a race. Great job by William Byron, his spotter, the communication. When it the goes patience. back to goes back to talking about do you want to be the leader? What well, you do if those guys all have different agendas behind you? Yeah, had that or not happen, they wrecked right there. I really think he was the set and duck. Perfect case scenario when those guys got side by side behind him. Freaking driving, great spot and great team. Bubba Wallace with the window net down. A couple of those guys took some big hits at the start finish line. Bubba ends up ninth. Justin Haley climbed out of his car after finishing seventh. But Charlotte, North Carolina's William Byron has scored his third career win in his 149th NASCAR Cup Series start. He becomes the 46th different driver to win a cup race at Atlanta, where his best previous finish was eighth. And he is the fifth different driver to go to victory lane this season, the third from Hendrick Motorsports. He earned that one. Yeah, he did. I tell you what, William, not just today, but he's really been a superstar on these super speedways. Just hasn't had it go his way at the end, other than Daytona last year. So Christopher Bell is second, Ross Chastain is third, Kurt Busch and Daniel Suarez, the unofficial top five. Corey LaJoy comes home sixth. What a finish. Hendrick Motorsports, three victories this season with three different drivers. The first team since Carl Keekaker racing in 1956 to win with three drivers in the season's first five races. Here's Jamie Little. William Byron brings it home for his third career win. You just got out of the car and said that was fun. So you got a super speedway car, an intermediate setup. What was this day like in the end? It was it was so different. You know, honestly, the last few laps there, just trying to manage the gap to Bubba and, and trying to not get too far out front. You know, my spotter Brandon is his first win, so congrats to him. And just thanks to this whole team. I mean, they've done a great job this year. Um, lots of changes with the next gen car, but 
the Liberty University Chevrolet was was awesome there. So uh, worked hard overnight. You know, we had had a pretty rough practice and uh, worked hard on it and got it got it handling well. Like I told you, it was kind of a intermediate style with a little bit of speedway into it. So a lot of fun. Thanks to everyone at Hendrick Motorsports and super exciting. How about this crowd? Pack stands here to see an Atlanta race like we've never seen before, William. Oh, uh, so cool. I mean, I think these fans saw one heck of a race. It was certainly long for my seat, lots of, you know, mentally taxing. So uh, just thanks to all the fans for coming out. It's been an awesome weekend. Uh, I got a hit win last night in the late model, too. So been a lot of fun. William Byron wins it at Atlanta. Well, quite an eventful day for Ross Chastain. Up front, have a blown tire, lose some laps, get the laps back, in position at the end of this race, ended up third. Maybe second. Uh, yeah, what a day, Regan. It's, um, that's the fight. That's the fight in track house. That's this Gen 7 car to take a lick like that, blow a tire out of nowhere, leading, just cruising, blow a right rear, um, slam the wall, thought our day was over. Uh, our guys went under underneath the car, um, got the toe closer, and uh, we got the balance back uh, where I could drive it, and just having El Chevy was fast. It, it was so fast. I mean, we were fighting with Will there at the beginning. It's so cool to race with, again, buddies. Like, I'm getting to race with my, I only have a few, but the last few weeks I've been able to race with my buddies. So uh, can't thank everybody at Trackhouse, the Moose, Advent Health. Um, everybody's been on this car, and Justin Marks uh, and his family for what they do for me. Um, and Daniel Suarez, what a teammate to push me there at the end. Good job, Ross. What a finish. So let's go back and watch as they come to the white flag. We can see Ross Chastain just going for it. He gets to the inside of Bubba Wallace. We had a big run. And then you see Bubba gets really loose into turn one. That outside lane basically is gone. Watch the run of the 20, Christopher Bell. Well, I think that's what Ross Chastain is talking about, whether or not Bell was forced below the white line or went below the white line to advance. And NASCAR has judged that Christopher Bell drove below the double line, so he will be penalized to the tail end of the lead lap, and Ross Chastain will finish second. And that's where the contact happened with Chris um, Busher in the 99 of Suarez, and then they just, it was an accordion effect behind him with Haley and Bubba Wallace. And you saw Ryan Blaney run out of luck again, got tipped up into the wall. He will end up 18th today. Oh, a big hit by Bubba Wallace. You hit with that passenger side, driver side, even with the safer barrier, that is a big impact. So you see Chris Buescher goes to the inside, but he's got Haley on the inside of him. Wasn't quite it, clear. No, just three wide. And Daniel Suarez coming down as that track, that just that little curve there after the start finish line took those three cars out of play after the flag. Oh. I don't want to do this, but we're going to ride with Ryan Blaney. Ouch. Yeah, he got just to caught the, him in a real vulnerable position there. Yeah. Just got to the back bumper for the 23 and had to push him. It was time to go. He didn't have a choice but to try to push him, got him loose. Yeah, that was two, two big hits by Bubba. You saw he, he, he even went a little bit further down the the front straightaway and, and got into the wall again. That's Chase Briscoe talking it over with Ryan Blaney as William Byron gets to celebrate in victory lane. We got a lot to unpack here. So we'll be right back to Atlanta Motor Speedway after a very eventful finish.
started anyway. William Byron celebrates on the newly reconfigured, high-banked Atlanta Motor Super Speedway that delivered Daytona Talladega-style drafting and racing all day long. And here's who he joins, two of his teammates, Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, along with Austin Sindrick and Chase Briscoe in the winner's circle this year. So, brand new racetrack. We set a record for the number of leaders in a 500 mile race here and a record for the number of lead changes. And if there was such a record for side by side all the way back through the pack racing all day, this had to be it. Yeah, it certainly didn't disappoint. I know there's some torn up race cars and some hurt egos out there, but boy, was the racing spectacular from the start, drop of the green flag all the way to the checkered flag. And, you know, congratulations to, to Rudy Fugel, for, to William Byron. Those guys have been so close. I've sat there with them in disappointment when they've been close and it didn't work out. Great to see those guys get to victory lane today. And congratulations to Market Smith and everybody at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Gutsy call. We had a racetrack that everybody loved. We loved it as race car drivers. Everybody in the industry took a chance on this place, made it a super speedway, action-packed all day long, just like the vision that he was hoping for. So congratulations to that. And, oh, buddy, you're back in Vicky Lane I say, again, I had a huh? good time <laughs> hanging out with you guys so again. Thank you so much. That was fun. All right, uh, Vice Chairman, you're wanted in Victory Lane, so get the heck out of here. I'm on my way. Clint Let's and I will pop up. <laughs> Save one for me. And you'll hear from the Charlotte studio on the other side of this break after a wild, thrilling, exciting day at the all-new Atlanta Motor Speedway.